Especially when you're doing mindless stuff. This one needs a root beer. So good. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi. We never sound good. I suppose that means that we're rolling. Hi, friends. Welcome Hello. to Don't Trust Me, Volume 6, uh, not 50, 69, it's 59. Oh, yeah, that was almost, that was almost Hold nice. on a little bit longer, and then... I, I, I'm i only here I for the... You, it'll I'm only six here for the mean number. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, yeah. All right, when I call your name, what's your character's... Uh, uh, mod... What's your character's mod? Get it. Mod. <laughs> <laughs> um, mod's mod is his mod. That is our. Yeah. You sure. ask. You ask. What's your character's mod? What's your favorite mod's ember? Mod. What's my favorite yeah. ember? <laughs> uh, static ember. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. What's your favorite traitor? Uh, Benedict Arnold, probably. <laughs> what about? What's your favorite mistress? Oh, mistress. <laughs> this is a great. <laughs> mistress is mistress's favorite mistress. Okay. What's your favorite melody? Mm. What's What's my favorite melody? Freebird. Oh, um, definitely Wonderwall. I was gonna say yeah. it's gotta be Wonderwall. Obviously. Obviously. I don't know. A little dicky. I'd say maybe. That is all she wrote, folks. Welcome yeah. to the party times. Okay, so okay. bear with me. This is what I have written down. Oh, oh boy. I can. Please let it be Texas Huge. It is. Okay. Session 58. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> the signal absorption is just a tether to the storage box. Once severed, Mod simply reabsorbs his lost brains. We head back <laughs> to the tower and listen to some sweet tunes, i.e. the files kept since they've been found. One file was great. It was like, and then this whole section is in parentheses. This or... Whoa, dude, that's the Vice Brick Super Converter. It transforms your shit into an encoded power source that has a sad tendency of feedback looping itself into oblivion. We should only keep this shit on for like an hour and force a few unlucky bros to suffer during that time so we can power our operation. Be a shame if this machine got kept on for longer, though, i.e. multiple weeks longer. The group also sees a list of designations from RWI classifying different entity types found by the foundation. Fancy. Um, some other things to include during what happened last session was we uh, killed off the remaining members of Glorious Farm Battle inside of the uh, Silhouette City. We also retrieved uh, uh, Caddy's body from the surface. That was a big, uh, a big section of time that occurred. <laughs> Drunk. Anything else cool? <laughs> anything else crazy that you thought happened during that time? <laughs> um. I will okay. bring it up if that is the case. <laughs> I do also ask that you be patient with me tonight. I'm feeling kind of weird, but I should be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that because you napped today? Mind your business. <laughs> it's just Thank don't you. nap. Still nap for it. All right. So as we were. Um, as we were essentially finished reading the uh, the second uh, file that Mistress had uh, procured from that uh, uh, from our travels at this facility, there was the one with the RWI classification. You notice that after trying to edit a little bit, the entries that were marked in uh, bold are new entries. So someone must have overwritten sections that weren't in bold. And I, I believe I posted the files on the server. Yeah. You sure did. Oh, you're great. I'm like, oh, great. No, that was my phone. Okay. <coughs> Man, I'm going to drop my phone and soda go just pours out of it. See. So we just got the last one to do, right? I think so. <laughs> okay, yeah, you did. You did send yes. the things. Just head out safe now.
just uh, picking up from where we left off last time. <coughs> Mistress will mutter, fascinating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm, seems off brand, but okay. okay. So we have one more folder to mm-hmm. check out. Yes, you yeah. have one final uh, drive to insert mm-hmm. if you guys wanted to. Yeah, so we may I as believe well it's insertion that. time. No, I think we're good. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, no, let's, <laughs> let's insert it. That's cool. Let's ins- I think we're doing hair. Kind of God, this is appearing on the big screen. That'd be cool. Share your secrets. Always happens like that. I opened up the super computer box. Secrets. <laughs> Sometimes, if you're watching, you oh, yeah. you can see where your dash is. Don't worry about it. Feel better? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It feels good for a little bit. Then they fucked up and you just go to their house and be like, hey. Ranch. Beef them out. Where the fuck's my ranch? Ranch. Oh. <coughs> 18 naked cowboys in the dish. That's the real question. Why haven't I named the character Ranch yet? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem like you. You're a label. Oh, no. Yelly. He attacks. What are you doing? He's on the table. Please remove him from the table. Somebody who's close to him, yeah. grab him. Come here, baby. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next file you guys will uh, have access to. Essentially, it has it's another it's another kind of a like a uh, like a file dump set similar to the first one, not so much the second one, which is just a series of classifications. This one here is titled at the top. Lessons in the Undefendable. And it, uh, it reads as such. Okay. Establishing base of operations within this facility gives us a stunning look at our predecessors' work into the unknown before the gift of Sojin was even upon us. It was at the end of this organization's reign when the events that birthed our current world began to take shape. It is with this pretense in mind that I begin my research into the art. The art shall consist of merely blanketed terms and theories until a major breakthrough is made. Hypothesis. By studying the events that felled RWI and later the town of Bridespeak, Oklahoma, we can cultivate a means of offensive capability that cannot be outclassed by an Argier ranked soldier or higher. In this project, we will study the three known appearances of the so called Red Angel, as well as the progenitor members of the ODK study that began within this institution under the Sigma banner. <laughs> yeah. You have a section titled First Appearance after this. It says, By studying the video footage and record. Oh, by the way, this is also good to note. You guys found this in that one uh, place in the Remnants Lab where that mm, that right. burn was in the wall. And mm. there was that destroy uh, testing facility. You found okay. that in here. That's okay. Just, just, uh, just a reminder, because that is important. Uh, uh, that's no, where you find it. This was the one that we had to repair, right? Mm hmm. You had to fix this one. Well, you fixed no, no, no. You didn't have to fix this one. You fixed the first one, the one oh, okay. with the vice breaks. Okay. By studying the video footage and recorded documentation of recoverable files, we can lay claim that the religious entity, the Red Angel, is in fact at least based off of a real life person during this period. Any other deviations from this recorded individual to create the fabled angel are not to be considered as of yet. For now, we shall simply address the subject as Red to allow a level of separation from fictional religious propaganda. Our first piece of evidence was recovered from a heavily damaged containment chamber, now resting within the Remnants Lab. Soundless footage of the events that took place are embedded below. So, what you see before you now um, is a hyperlink, essentially, that um, is uh, kind of like an uh, embedded uh, video file into the uh, the program. You can continue reading, or you can click on it if you'd like. 
I would like to click on it. Yeah, I, I would like, well, I, I'm assuming Mistress is the one handling it. Mistress, I would like to click on that. <laughs> I would like Mistress to click on it. <laughs> I, I, I would agree. It, it feels I'm like like a, a clicky time. <laughs> it feels like a clicky time. That sounds like something Mistress would say. This is something that she was saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. You see, what appears before you is a, it's in color, but as the, the, as the, uh, the, the file stated, a uh, completely silent uh, video clip um, within essentially a restored version of the uh, testing chamber in which you received this uh, piece of fallen data from. Within the testing chamber, you see two individuals standing essentially on the uh, opposite corners from each other, just kind of like a wrestling ring. Uh, sort of, you see one figure standing on the left side, uh, a figure with this uh, kind of dark, uh, a poorly cut hair that kind of ends near the neck, uh, a small little bun where a bunch of the hair is pulled back at the very end here. Uh, around his eyes is this uh, this kind of faded white bandage that wraps around um, around. The clothing itself is this this dark coat that almost reaches the ground but doesn't quite drag to there, kind of lazily flopping the wind. It looks relatively thick. And within the individual's hands is this, what can only be described as a club, like a billy club, no longer than, a, than like the length of an arm. But it's not like circular shape, it's like a triangle triangeloid prism essentially that grows in expands outward as it grows upwards and ends with this triangular base um, it's this kind of deep red and black with markings around it as the, <gasps> as the individual grips it on the opposite end of the testing chamber from this video is a figure standing wearing these uh, very faded uh, and very uh, well, semi-skin tight jeans, a, sh a uh, button-up white shirt that's unraveled and untucked in, almost looks like it's not even buttoned up properly, the collar pops slightly, essentially this looks like a, a, a run-down businessman, essentially. The hair is this dirty blonde, and it uh, ends with these uh, ratty curls. His uh, nose is long and sharp, and has these just kind of dead eyes as he stands forward here. This individual is not uh, not armed with anything at the time. You see the figures uh, in this room talking for a extended period of time. You, you can only tell this from their mouth movements and gesticulations during this time when out of nowhere the figure with the bat blasts forward wielding the bat and strikes the figure across the face sending a wave of almost looks like like red wind that blasts out from the other side of his face as it connects and sends this energy offwards and it collides into the side of the test chamber. In the test chamber, these metal walls that are on the side here seem to kind of rust as it happens. It like affects it. The air is at such a... <coughs> what? Such a saturation that it affects the wall outside of it as well. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what? Gilmore has. Silly kitty. Chasing the Discovered mouse. a mouse. Is there a mouse? Yeah. It's all over the sheep's screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gilmore's chasing me. I think Jolie sent us a video one time of Ripley doing that. Yeah. Oh, I like how you sent it. <laughs> the cat did. You silly goose. <laughs> he likes to type. I've used this before. But, 
sense. At that point, after the figure gets blasted, you see his head kind of snap back into place here, and the skin color, which was this kind of jaundiced yellow, turn gray on him. His hand snaps forward, grabs the figure by the neck, lifts him into the air, and chucks him across the room. The billy club scattering across the floor, and as it scatters across the floor, bursts into smoke, and laying behind it is just a small, wrapped up white dagger as it floats across the ground. The figure at this point, his fingernails extend like something out of Wolverine 1 with like a saber tooth, and he blasts forward as well at this time. The figure, as he gets close to the figure on the ground, you see this guy laying on the ground. It's not an easy determination, but it looks like a rudimentary version of Misty Step as the air around him begins to vibrate uncontrollably. And and he blasts to the other side of the room, scrambling to his feet. He runs and he grabs his club, which once again erupts and turns back into this uh, arm-like club. The figures collide at this point, and each time that the, the bandaged figure hits the, the now gray man with the claws, his visage grows and strengthens. His claws grow, his eyes darken, and his skin becomes even more uh, of this, uh, this, like, demonic black, like he's strengthening as he's taking damage. You see at one point the figure's arm clasp around uh, the left hand of the bandaged man as he grabs it and you see like the, even from the camera angle the veins bulge in his arms how, how greatly he squeezes. He squeezes so hard that the man's arms flex open and twitch uncontrollably. And then, at this point, you see a spray of blood burst from the back of the man with the, with the, uh, uh, not from the guy being grabbed, but from the guy doing the grabbing. A third arm bursts from the back, oh. the shoulder blade area of this man, this dark crimson red arm that twitches with three fingers, goes in for a slash, and once again, the figure misty steps out of this grasp and then backs upwards, back against the wall. Another arm appears from the back of the other one. It's kind of like a dead space necromorph situation here. As the arms twitch, the figure begins growing more and more like a like a diseased werewolf growing situation. The figures uh, attack each other back and forth. The man with the club on the defensive, teleporting away when he is unable to get the upper hand. But as the fight goes on, the club that he holds grows larger and it begins emitting like the sigils on it begin to glow this dark red as it expands and expands and each time he gets hit you see the figure that keeps growing and expanding in this horrible werewolf fashion get pieces been blown off which regenerate almost instantly mm-hmm. like the arms getting severed off by these blunt blasts grow back instantly and as the fight goes on more and more arms just shoot out from different places it's like a like a Frankenstein spider attack at this point. Where somewhere near the end of this brawl, um, the figure holding the club thrusts it forward and pins the man against the back wall with the triangular end of it essentially colliding through the wall, through the man's stomach, and pinning him through against the wall. And it's at this point you see the figure, the werewolf figure, light up this bright sun, uh, sun bright, and explode into nothing. As the figure holding the club collapses onto the ground, onto his knees, looks at the ground, you see this finger, uh, triangular shaped imprint on the wall behind it that just kind of burns in like a cigarette mark. And then, about a minute afterwards, you see a pile of blood on the ground essentially grow another person. And it's a situation you've seen all before. It's a situation very similar to when you remove the heart from the figure, from uh, Yusha's back earlier in your exploits here. Essentially starting as a beating mass on the ground, quickly growing into a person. And sure enough, a naked version of the, uh, the businessman is laying on the ground mm-hmm. unconscious. Okay. And the footage cuts off from there. Okay, so the, the attacker, or, or the one who I guess was holding the bat, um, 
he uh, was there any other other way to like identify him? You said that he kind of had like uh, shaggy brown hair. Or... Um, make a just make a, a brief intelligence check for me. Sure. Start odd. I'd be happy to. No, look at the babies. Isn't he sweet? My intelligence is just He's a nice man. average now. He very much enjoys being on my computer. Uh. <laughs> He's warm. Mm-hmm. He does. Yes. Hey. Come on. Yes. Oh, that's a... Okay, great. I'll be up there. Ooh. Um, on my, intel- on on my intelligence roll, that is a dirty one. one. <laughs> oh my god. You have you no know idea. God. No, I just I just watched the video and I go, yeah, that's a guy. I mean, you you might be able to assume that one of the figures in this fight are uh, relating to the people that the uh, author of this document is talking about. Okay. But it's not clear, and as of this moment, you've gone through so much memory loss and gain that it's not the biggest thing on your mind. Although you do think that you have seen the face before. Yeah. Like, just through your exploits here. Gotcha. Can I yeah. know? What'd you get me? Yeah, if you want to do a, just a brief memory much. check as well. Uh, Mistress will, like, try to bounce some ideas off Ember while she's doing this, like, you know, notable features and whatnot, try to give the help action mm-hmm. and, towards this. Am I rolling intelligence or just. Okay, since you were both here at that. Uh, here to kind of witness this memory, um, I would allow you to do that because you would theory would recognize it too. Okay, so am mm-hmm. I doing the help just action? Doing a, yeah, just roll, yeah. just roll intelligence check with advantage. Okay. Eighteen. Eighteen. That's not bad. Okay. When you first got here and you found Bright's Peak Manor, um, before ascend, uh, descending into RWI, you guys found a picture, picture. of people who owned the bar upstairs. You recognize both of these figures from the picture. Both of them were in this picture. Did the figure with the bandages and then the disheveled businessman mm-hmm. were both here. Okay. I don't know if you heard that, Kayla. No, I didn't. Um, both of the figures from this story you guys recognized from the pictures in the bar. <laughs> was I right? Huh? Did you see what I messaged you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you see what Gilmore messaged you? Yeah, I did. I love it. <laughs> I love was Gilmore right? No. <laughs> he was, he was pretty well. He idiot. tried. He's an idiot. Considering uh, the document. He wasn't here, okay? He wasn't here for that person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, continuing the document from there. Afterwards, it reads, Within the footage is about between Red and another of the Sigma class that we have correlated based off substantial evidence as none other than specimen 020D. According to our intelligence from Lantern and his disciples, the qualities of 02 match that of our current entities that follow in our research, although current whereabouts of 02 are unknown. 02 is witnessed recovering far faster than the specimens from our age, however volatile and drastic changes occurring each iteration of its regeneration. My hypothesis is this. Violent regeneration slash transformation must correlate directly with this specimen's unique abilities or its wake, as Lantern urges me to use. The effects of this wake continue as constant damage is inflicted and then abruptly upon Red's use of the artifact in hand. By studying the footage, we can make three assumptions of the entity known as Red. First, his physical features and distinct visual characteristics match identically with the Sioctan race found on our very own city of Jonas. Despite these events taking place centuries before their arrival in our orbit, the wings and natural sojourn I should have mentioned that in the video. Near the end of the fight, the figure did sprout wings and in order to help it correct itself in the fight. Okay. I forgot to mention that at the time. But that would have been something that showed up in the footage. The wings and natural sojourn aptitude align perfectly. Second, the artifact used changes in mass and emits sojourn-like prowess comparable 
to the wakes studied in the OD projects. This exact artifact production became known within LOA ranks circa a year after the arrival of Jonas. Third, the artifact, if only temporarily, was able to incapacitate Specimen 02. Hypothesis. These artifacts may possibly be obtained from the city of Jonas, and if studied slash utilized, can be used against our Gear Plus adversaries. The terminal will be pleased with this current state of office, finally obtaining value in our operation. The next section is labeled Second Appearance. It says, Our second lead in the search for the art leads me to the events that led to the decimation of Brides Peak, Oklahoma. It was during this event, known colloquially as the Alcove, when Red makes his second appearance. <coughs> Due to the recovered street footage during the event, we are able to separate Red once again from the fictional fable of the angel itself. Below is footage recovered during multiple key points in the attack. Additional footage has been cropped for expediency. And there is once again another video hyperlink posted quick, quick down below. Yes. Uh, clicking on the footage this time. You essentially are brought to a street cam. It's at the point of a light post. Like it was put on like at like a corner for surveillance for a local business, essentially. And you see a townscape. Uh, the street devoid of life, and in fact you see uh, lights flashing off out of screen. From the footage of the, the camera, you can essentially only see like a, a single intersection of the streets where you also know multiple people like running uh, running towards the left, towards the left street at this point. And they're running in like a, like a fearful motion uh, as if they're trying to escape. And you see this cloud of dust just fall after them during this time. It's almost as the cloud of dust is chasing them. Like you see multiple patches of the dust essentially like following the same trails that the survivors oh. are as they're running across. And as a couple moments of this happen, you see one of these individuals run down the street and the cloud dust that's chasing him coalesces and forms into this bestial figure, this dark gray and pale muscular beast with these sprawling horns that forms out of the dust, tackles the figure to the ground drags him off into an alleyway. The figure's arms are adorned with these metal rings that kind of overlap on themselves in, in, in random fashions, but that's the only clothing that seems to be visible on this creature that forms out of the air and drags this individual off into nowhere. After a couple seconds of there being no more people on screen, uh, you see a great flash occur off from the side. It almost completely like blinds out the camera as it fades out. There's, um, the camera's view is completely dark. Like it's gone from night to day or to, from day to night. Sorry. It's like something's blocking the sun. And you see just a torrent of rubble fly through the right side of the screen and just collide with the buildings, knocking over street uh, street signs and blasting out windows, collapsing the brickwork of the businesses nearby. And then more of these shadowy figures just start running from right to left off side of the screen. The footage cuts and you can assume at this point um, it is cut to a different point during this attack. You see several of these figures once again rushing off to the right where at one point they stop and they're standing there as if they're holding the line. And this figure runs off from the left side of the screen. And the figure with this long coat and this time like these heavy dark bandages 
pulled up over the head and the hair going down maybe to like the mid back but other than that it kind of matches the figure that was in the fight from earlier mm. in the left hand is this large burly club but in the right hand is this dark sphere a sphere that's no larger than the size of a baseball and it's completely pitch black and it almost it's a very bizarre sensation but your eyes are almost pulled towards it like it's even the f the video footage of it is carrying this gravitational pull from there about maybe a meter off from where the radius of this baseball is you see these black tendrils whipping the air around and there's about eight of them that are all, all, like deliberately moving when they're not being directly looked at by the man holding the sphere, they are completely motionless, even as he moves. And when he moves his gaze towards them, they flick and they whip the air around them. And as he moves in the screen here, these tendrils are pulled into a certain space, like octopus tentacles forming, like twisting up and forming an arm. And they whip across these entities, and as they collide into them, the these muscular demonic figures evaporate into dust and the ashes in the air ignite and they burn away like like sparklers on a, on a on a firework night everywhere his head turns these tendrils whip and collide with these figures like extra limbs they have that much control they pull apart at will collide in different areas just like essentially like a spider trying to climb on different pieces of a wall and then once the entities are cleared out the figure bursts off to the right in the same direction from where the explosion happened the footage cuts again and then once again it resumes in a just a dark uh, street corner where the camera shakes ferociously and once again a flash envelopes the camera's footage shaking occurs it occurs it gets more volatile the moorings from where the camera is sitting almost can't even hold it up anymore and right as you see the road itself rupture in unearth itself the footage cuts from like a historical standpoint some of these objects that we've seen this person holding would mistress like recognize them as being known things associated with give me a history check yeah. Ooh, 16 16 Okay, now, this is just something with you knowing a little bit of information about the city of Jonas. You've done some research on the Sioptons as well. You've learned the language, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, and also with dealing with Maud, this artifact, as you've witnessed it, resembles very similar markings to the obelisk that Maud has. And it changes form similar as well. Well, although you haven't necessarily seen mods change form that much. It's I feel like it's relatively it static. Well, no, it, it's just been, but when you have it out, it's just an obelisk. It hasn't right. like, changed in size like mm -hmm. this one has. Yeah. But this is looking like a very similar type of artifact to the one that Mod owns. right hand, you have no idea. You, you have to assume it's a spell of some sort of Sojin, but uh, this, it's, this, there's a lot going on, and it seems a little too powerful to be a castable spell. Is this recording also supposed to be in a time before the Sojin, or is it just the first one that takes place? This one... You know, 
Uh, essentially, you from an 18 hole, you recognize this is taking place during the the events that destroyed Bride's Peak, known as the Alcove, yeah. which did happen in the Vacant Age, which was before anybody had Sojin. So okay. this was, yeah, before even any of the populace would have access to oh. this, like, to magical powers. Andrew, can you describe what the guy looks like with the, with the, um, the hooks? Like, the silver hooks in him again? Okay, yes. Um, the... That feels, that sound feels really familiar to me, but I don't know. You're talking about the, like, the beast that formed out of the, the mist? Yeah, like, whatever, whatever had this, the hooks. Yes, in it. it's essentially, uh, a, like, this big... It's kind of like a, a like a hairless bear almost. It's it, they're huh. very large and it's this brolic muscular. The skin is this pale white with hints of like gray, uh, gray waves in the flesh. Uh, same kind of physiology as like a, like I said like a bear, but with its head here these uh, uh, teeth that sprawl out in. Uh, like a like a mutated manner and these horns that branch out like a deer's but they're not antlers they're like horns they just sprawl out from different places all across the back of the head and they go in the direction like past the head they don't go forward okay so they're not used for like defense or anything it's just like a like an eruption of horns uh the uh, only clothing on this creature are these just these heavy rings these big kind of like uh what are they called like mandible this? chain like mandible okay. cuffs and then there's like five of them that just run around and rattle viciously okay but not something other. like like hooked into the skin no nothing like that no it's and there's super metal <laughs> and there's there's multiple of these creatures there right? yeah this was that was the first one you saw but yeah you saw tons of these and they all look almost like identical except for like the horns they they kind of sprawl off randomly Okay. But they, yeah, they look very similar. They're all just like the same creatures. Okay. And the uh, the orb that was being held is it like a physical orb, or it does it seem to be like magic based? Make an arcana check. Oh, that's I, I graded that. Good luck. Mm-hmm. We'll see. So, while Ian's getting that pulled out, this orb, uh, as our attention was drawn to it, would you say we pondered it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lee. Okay. <laughs> I thought about making a ponder, ponder your orb joke. You had no choice but to ponder it. Uh, <laughs> nine. Nine? Uh, it looks like magic, but, I mean, according to your info, like, I'm assuming, Mistress, you shared kind of... Yeah. I, it's pretty sojid. I'll tell that to the party. I'll say that I think it looks like magic. <laughs> That's hard to tell other than that. <laughs> yeah. It's hard because if Mistress doesn't know it, then it's you're in kind of a loss here because you've never seen any spell like this before. Yeah. Um, Something else you would notice with the orb, too. It was, like, anchored to a point, a specific distance from the palm of his hand. Okay. Like, no matter how he moved, there was no lag time. Like, picture this, the orb, this, the hand. It wasn't kind of like a like a, this situation. Okay, it so was, it was, like, part of his body. Like, but it was not connected, though. It was... Like an invisible tether. Yeah, and it was fixed. It was sturdy. It yeah. did not move from its distance <laughs> from where it was. Generated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. And these tendrils that kind of formed out of like thin air, and they kind of coated this invisible circumference, this orb that was like a meteor, uh, like a meter out from this black spot. Like they formed a meter out, and are just kind of coating this translucent sphere that yeah. you can't even see. I don't know if that makes any and, sense. But. Yeah, I know. And is the person... Is this the is the per- same figure as well you would notice from the first... The, from the first the video? The, club, uh, same the, per- the same same guy holding the club. Yes. Um, do we... Uh, I mean, I recognize the project designation of OD. Is there... Has there been any indication or, or like what I maybe recall something that would... Tell me what OD stands for. I don't necessarily make you. Okay, okay just give me a flat intelligence check. Oh, this great. is gonna be hard for you because you'd have to put pieces together, and if you, Kyle, 
haven't put it together yet, then I'm not going to give it to you that easy. Yeah. Uh, it's a 17. That's not bad. I mean, you can give me, like, a, a hint if you want, and I can just try to piece it together on my own. Okay, there's really something you notice throughout your um, dealing with these creatures, these people that regenerate all this. This a character like this regenerated and had similar powers to that of Indy. Uh, similar to that of Dahlia, similar to that of the stone tree down on there. This is Disney's OD. The tree was 36 OD. Yeah. Zero two OD are here. All these figures. Something you might connect as well was a designation that you saw Spit give Indy when was asked about the RWI classifications. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, she mm-hmm. had the Alpha designation. Reading the file you just read, the Alpha means defector. Okay. okay. And your terms are OD. So, okay. maybe that has something to do with it, maybe. but it's kind of up in the air. But yeah. all these people are share these similarities, and they are given the same designation by this group of people. So, um, according to Indy and her friend, which regenerated from that heart, they said they had been captured by this group of people a while back. Yeah, and were part of experiments towards it. And you already know that there's multiple cases yeah. of them working with okay. people. So, so defector is like their their uh, classification for basically anyone. Mm-hmm. Sound, sounds like anyone who uh, might be like a traitor or something that's, that they uh, use as justification for these experiments. That's what I what I'm thinking. Something anyway. like that, but I'll, I'll piece it, it might together. Be, it might do you good to look into what that term means in the scope of the world. Uh, you yeah. might ask some people that may have a little bit of more insight on it, because the term defector could mean multiple things. Yeah. It's just someone that breaks off from their yeah. field. Uh, a traitor or a, <laughs> an abandoner. I look, at, I look at traitor. <laughs> um, no. there, uh, <laughs> there's more to the file, by the way. Okay, yeah, go, let's go. Uh, sorry, I was asking. No, you're fine. No, <laughs> that's, question. It's perfectly fine to ask. That is that yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm ready to watch this one. Did I fuck it up? No. Okay. Okay. All right. So what's it continue to say after? After the hyperlink, it says several key factors of interest occur during these clips. Within the first section, we witness an unknown monstrosity race parading through the streets, forcing civilians either into or from their places of safety. These entities are unknown, and every facet of knowledge we have access to and have yet to surface again in any research we have made in relation. We will temporarily assume this branch will remain dormant of art potential until more evidence is laid bare. These entities seamlessly phase in and out of their corporeal states via a black symbiotic gas that blankets their visage. They attack indiscriminately, likely for conquest rather than survival, as no corpses witnessed have been gathered or devoured, at least within range of surveillance. During this section, we also witness debris scattering about from an apparent blast from beyond. By correlating this camera's location and studying the area the blast originated from, we make the assumption that this tremor is likely what caused the tunneling crater in the center of town. Although the blast keeps the town relatively intact, aside from the afflicted region. The second clip shows Red once again, this time wielding a bizarre sojin that matches no other recorded sightings in LOA history. Red possesses a spherical essence that seems to pull in the light and bend the space around its circumference, like light curving around a black hole. Several feet <coughs> from the orb, flashing tendrils are seen precisely clearing through the hordes of monsters chasing him down. By observing Red's head gestures during this time, we note that the tendrils stay in place until his field of view encompasses them. We theorize that the controlling of this phenomenon has direct connection to Red's eyes and his ability to see them. As his vision skews from the orb, the integrity of the Sojin structure appears to unravel as well. We correlate his intentional eye obstructions from the first appearance to now as a unique power of individual puppets with his eyes. 
Sadly, the camera angle never shows a perfect portrait view of his eyes throughout the attack. Therefore, the thought cannot reach full certainty. The final clip is several minutes later, where the camera visually dismounts in a flash as an atomic level blast is seen expanding within the sky, encompassing the town and eventually the camera. Hypothesis. This special sojourn used during this event was the true cause of Bride's Peak's decimation. As a recorded note, no known survivors of the alcove have ever come to light since the event was recorded. My question is this. Can an Argyr Plus defend against a Sojin that even a world-ending class alien assault could not? Third appearance. Let this be on the record that the third appearance has no plausible evidence as to ever truly occurring. Therefore, I will use the premise that the being in this story is to be the angel and not red from the prior two. I take assumption that the religious fable merged the two entities around this point to create a grabbable interest in the meek populace. According to LOA history, a single soldier prophet approached with the gift, handing it down to but about five disciples before perishing as a result. The fictional fable states that the red angel descended from the heavens, now conveniently with holier-than-thou bullshite powers, more than several centuries later. He approaches the known prophet and granted him the first gift of sojourn to humans, before gracefully ascending back to the heavens to take seat on his throne of child's lore. All of this can be chalked up to simple historical prattle if it weren't for the documented personal uh, personas that Eloy kept deep within the heads of Brave Mind, which, with both Terminal's connections and Nameless's primes, we are easily able to collect. The photos of the five disciples are all of individuals lost to time as their passings were coded in obscurity by the New Order, except for one case. There's a hyperlink. And this isn't like a video hyperlink, this is just a, a picture for a JPEG, essentially. You pull it up and you see photo of five individuals surrounding what seems to be this kind of flattened out table mm. that uh, has runes built around it, their arms stretched outwards with yes. red uh, red engravings on their hand. These five individuals all together. One of them is slightly familiar to you guys. Yeah. Although it's hard to tell there, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it's like looking at it's like looking at a picture of your grandpa from when he was a kid. You're like, I know I know this guy, but do I know this guy? <laughs> I've never seen him like this. I bet I know. Moving past there, it says one of the disciples matches the exact description from not only Amba's passing during his envoy into the West, but also that of Lantern during his and 35 ODs escaped from their predicament after the radio tower was seized. This individual, according to our two very close sources, matches that of not only a top-tier soldier, but that of an illegal ascender. Hypothesis. The Narjir Plus, from the earliest point in our sojourn history, can face slash defeat modern-day Archer Plus adversary. What originally began as a whimsical dive into the lores of this hopeful... Oh. I fucked up with my diving. Oh. A whimsical dive into the lores of the hopeful now brings us one step closer to discovering the art. With the study of these wakes, the artifacts from the city, the legendary powers that put this town to sleep, and the shambles of a forgotten prophet. The discovery of the art is finally visible. I shall remain hopeful in my current studies as well. May the moon's lantern shine bright. Dr. B. That's where it ends. More like Dr. Bitch. Dr. Bitch. Dr. Bitch! What's up? Don't Mistress will try to... And I'll post this as well. So rack her yes, brain to mm -hmm. 
see like where this familiar one, this familiar individual in the picture, uh, like who that <laughs> might be. Unless it's somebody familiar to literally no, everyone except the hostile or, or Dante or traitor. Dante knows no. who this traitor has no fucking clue who this guy is. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Okay, I'll you give you. Do you want me just to say it? Because I can just say it. If, if Mr. I mean, if you want to be meta about it, but like you guys will have to figure this out in game, at right? Some point. Like, if Mistress wasn't one of the people who came into contact with this person or might recognize them, then I'm not going to make the check, because otherwise it'll just look like five people that Mistress has never seen before. Uh-huh. But if one of them looks, I will like, say, out familiar of to Mistress, but, like, an old picture of a newer person... You and Trader, out of everyone in this group, I wouldn't necessarily say you guys have seen this person. Okay. Everyone else has, though. Whether you put that connection together or not. Do you think it's Natch? No. Um, it's. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I wasn't asking <laughs> you! Dante's like, no, man, I'm shooting down the hell he's eating. No. I don't think it was a bad thought. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be. I mean, there, there was, was one clue like, there was one one in there that just got shorter, like, made me. What the, was it? The, the sender. The sender. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, if you guys, if you, Melody, and it, it, and uh, Ember want to roll intelligence, if you don't okay, have awful. an idea, great it would be meta-wise. Intelligence. Uh, that's a two. I feel so good, because this is like the one time like I know something that like yeah. no one else in here knows. Yeah, but you ditched Hostel, so it yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Hostel runs back from like down the tunnel, goes, guys, I know hey guys, guys, don't worry, I, I got something to tell you. Hey. It's fuzzy. <laughs> Hostel collapses and dies. <laughs> um, I got a 14. After delivering 14? one final day. What'd you get? Net one. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got a two. This is hard this is a hard DC because the figure it's such an old photo. Yeah. You do know that Shut you, up, you definitely do recognize it. <laughs> I'm right, Melody. Right. And it sounds like yeah, did you message me? No, but I'm assuming you know who I'm talking about. Um, feel free to put some theories together yourself, Kale, but it does seem like you recognize this face from someone you ran into earlier in this campaign. Someone during your meeting with everybody here. Like, I, specifically one figure in the photo facing the camera, like, wait, okay, let's just the way there. this Maybe man's hair and beard is, I could see that as someone I've seen before. But I'd have to confer with other people. <laughs> so you do is recognize it, one of these five prophets as someone you've seen is it, recently. Is it TW? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Can you describe yeah. the way he looks one more time? Okay. The figure, um, it's not. Uh, at this point, it's kind of this darker, uh, this dark black hair. He has this uh, pointed beard that kind of heads downwards here, and these kind of shaggy sideburns, which don't look necessarily familiar. Hair pulled back and this kind of disheveled, uh, uh, dirty jacket uh, that's thrown over him here. And he has his hands out like this with these sigils out. The okay. biggest feature of him is the beard. It's, he looks like a stereotypical wizard, almost. Like a, like a young man's wizard. Like, this is what happened to Merlin before he became old and shitty. <laughs> okay. I mean, Noda has a wizard beard. <laughs> oh. And what's his stature like? Like, as far as his build? He seems to be... He seems relatively young. He, he's pretty thin. Okay. Um, he doesn't look over 30. Okay. Or maybe, like, in his 30s, at least. He okay. looks relatively young. What's his race? Uh, he's human. He's a tall human. And the other figures that are in this, all five of them are human, technically. Yeah. Oh, but this but is he's the only, the only one, one out of the that five. Yeah. seems familiar. And all of us except for Traitor and Mistress should know him? They haven't. You might. If you guys want to make rolls, because you guys in theory would have. Uh, the 
it, the identities of these five have been lost to obscurity uh, throughout LOA history because this was like before the LOA was established when these five were prominent. So this is from a long time And it's ago. not like we saw them in another picture. Like, we've actually seen him. You you swear you've seen an older version of this guy. Almost like a like a dead cop. He's like... Oh. That's like seeing, yeah, like like seeing your your like your dad in an old photo. It's like that's my dad, but is that my dad? What kind of check? Uh, it would have to be a history check. Twenty six. Six. I mean, it's not the okay. celestial. Something clicks okay. with you. Okay. So that's what I was saying. No, it, it was the celestial mistress. With and it was right when you first met everybody here. Like when you were with Fuzzy and everybody in the Celestia and all back there, and you were having this conversation with Hostel and Ember and Maud and all of them in this room here about uh, mm. individuals that they had met during this time. And at one point, the Celestia made a connection with Hostel. It was like, someone ascended you that's not a part of our mm. ranks. Okay. Who did that? And Hostel admitted his teacher, Aramil, the wizard that ascended him outside of the LOA's jurisdiction that had been harboring him in the town of Millview. Okay. I was thinking... So and he made the connection. Aramel? Well, I know of an Aramel, but he would have been long dead by now. This is something the Celestian said. He would have been year, hundreds of years old. Yeah. This is something I that said never session. I, I thought Aramel had a pretty like large build. That's why I asked. He's he not bul He's not like a glory, but he's more. He's taller, but he is no. He's not okay. Bulky, man. Because that's I why I asked that because I was thinking Aramel. Like. So <laughs> you, I was thinking Aramel, but in my head he's like a big guy. In in, the, in the my one. mind, I know you didn't describe him this way, but in my mind, Aramel was just as small as. No, <laughs> it's not a no. So, so <laughs> a I absorbed a very small human. I absorbed exactly, <laughs> exactly a regular person. But she got the opposite. I image absorbed of exactly zero percent of what you said. Aramel looked like, the, so that wasn't one, helpful to me at all. The one clue I think he gave that was like the most obvious to me was that he said like this guy like illegally ascended. That, that's the one person in our travels that we know that that's fair. has that I was too attached to the way he looked. Yeah. And try to think of it that way. Yeah. Um, you would, as they're ta discussing this, make that connection. And are like, this sounds like they're talking about, at yeah. least from our previous discussion, if you guys had met this person, uh, this individual that was related to Hostel, Aramu, while you don't have a personal connection to them or you haven't necessarily met this person ever, um, you do remember that conversation, and you'll be able to bring that up with the group where further discussion can become relevant. Mistress would uh, also, in this moment, like just try to study the picture and like uh, commit all of these faces to memory, like so that if she ran into anything else that looked like any of these people from like in her future studies, she might be able to make a connection like, oh, this is one of the prophets that no one has been able to make before. Mm -hmm. So she'll, she'll try to like get a specific description of each one like locked down uh, potentially in like a uh, Discord message at some later uh, Yeah, point. I can get you a description. I can yes. get you. Please remind me though because I, I tend to be forgetful on that. But yeah, I'll get you something. Easy, because you have the picture here, although easy, his the most easy. described. But the figure writing the uh, writing the document seemed to be interested in that uh, in that individual because two of their members, both Amba and Lantern, had become acquainted with this figure before. And if this figure is truly one of the five prophets, then. Uh, it would become quite an asset in their so-called arts, or a, a lesson in the undefendable, a way to right. fight a Archer Plus entity. And the whole document seems very obsessed on that, like, how do we fight an entity Archer or greater? Was what they seem to be focused on, or the guy writing. So, so is it like the entity that they're talking about is like the voice or one of these people in 
the videos. What do you mean the entity? Well, you said, like, how do we fight something that's, like, larger or better? Is that just a general, like... I think they just meant, like, a person. You don't miss it just not it's not specific is the thing. It doesn't necessarily name anybody Arger Plus. It just the, the guy seems fixated on being able to combat somewhere, Arger or more. Okay. So it was more it sounded more just like just a a conquest kind of thing than like a we seemed, have a specific person we It seemed about. just like a desperate attempt of at finding a way at fighting back against uh a force that normally you wouldn't be able to fight back against. Right. Okay, cool. <coughs> and that's where the document ends. You have the three laid out about you, and um, your guys are still on the third floor of the tower, and free to do what you will at this point. Uh, so his mistress communicated yet her oh, identification. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, she, would, she would put that potential theory forward for peer review. Yeah. And for Mon, peer Mon, review. And Mon has seen Aramel briefly. Only for a moment before yeah. he was absconded away by uh, by Amba. the lamp. Yeah, the lamp. Well, I guess Amba specifically. The, the lasagna. The lasagna. The lasagna. The lasagna. Sounded like you said the lasagna. The lasagna. Um, okay. Um, mistress, in in your time uh, with the Celestian, um, would the phrase defector mean anything to you beyond the obvious connotation? So, mistress only had like the one specific concrete interaction with the Celestian, right? Because he, he was part that, of a different branch. He doesn't... He, you know the Celestian never leaves his tower. You mm-hmm. sometimes see his... The little girl run around or people that are interning for the Obsidian Wing. Other than that, um, aside from if you're on rare occasions told to bring the girl back, yeah. You don't see the Celestia very often. I guess I'm more mentioned. In fact, that might have been one of your only physical conversations you've ever had with the Celestia. Yeah, in that case, she'll try to think back to that specific conversation to see if it came up. Yeah, because in, in general, I guess I was thinking more like in your line of work. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Really I know, I know. No, they can go back on it. This is easy, though. This happens all the time. Squish. Um, Sorry. <laughs> but you, yeah, I guess, in, uh, like, not even necessarily with just the Celestine, but I mean, in your work at the Capitol, is that mm-hmm. something you'd be familiar with? Yeah, so she'll think back and try to rack her brain for that. Okay. Because I, the player, am not familiar with it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Make me uh, just another history check here. That's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Ooh. I have a plus 9 to my history. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's just you're so smart. Your, you like your branch... Your branch focuses on summonings and whatnot from different, uh, different versions of the planes and whatnot. And so you do tend... One of the things you always... What's kind of admirable about you and your synergy with the Obsidian Wing is the Obsidian Wing's focus is on the other world uh, things that kind of f- focus on the outside of our realm. Um, at but a small juncture in your research, you remember coming across signature readings while researching that they were essentially uh, outsourced from your branch to the Obsidian as they were this is more than just like a, a matter of summoning and controlling of specific creatures but this is something from a little bit further on than your expertise 
and in your communication with the Celestian at the time, you feel like he used that term, although he never clarified what it meant. Mm. The Celestian seemed to know, because that term does kind of match a conversation you've had while transferring this information off to a different branch before. Okay, so she'll bring that up. That it's very, it's very vague. But then again, that's that's the extent of it is, knowledge on it. Yeah. yeah, something that the Celestian almost definitely knows more about, but the mistress does not. So something you would know as well from reading thirty six O D. Like this is just something since it only happened like a week or so ago. Um, while you read that large file from Dr. Island about Project 36 OD, they mentioned very specifically they commissioned the Obsidian Wing yeah. to help with the Gold Wing um, for 36 OD. And I don't know what else, <laughs> but I mean, I'm a, I'm, I don't know why you're asking about defectors, but I am a defector. <laughs> like, I mean, I yeah, same! I don't know if that's, yeah, what, that, I don't know if that's what that means, you guys. You no, know, I the I keep seeing this this designation come up for projects. This this OD designation, and I think that D might stand for defector, but I'm trying to figure out what that could mean beyond the obvious. And then I still don't know what the O. Huh? The O stands for original. Original defector. That's kind of what I thought at first. I was like, well, then why do you have like 36 of them? Dr. Dre blast in the background. Uh, original. Um, yeah. So. I don't, I've never heard of any of this. Original thing stuff. Although it is still kind of concerning, they're arming up to fight Argyrs. What are these guys trying to do? They're trying to fuck with something that shouldn't be fucked with. Well, I mean, if we're talking about the Great Bulls... They're trying to take over. I mean, but that's, I can. That's I kind of. I thought. A whole goal. I was thinking that they were trying to incite panic. Why would they do that? Though? I mean, they I'm may be trying to take over, over. Yeah, I, by yeah. inciting panic. And I mean, just from what I have seen so far, I mean, between their their experimentations with the voice and with. Uh, and with the, the the OD designations and what's come of those, they're tampering and stuff that's beyond anyone's knowledge, and who knows where it comes from or what the greater implications are. But well, it scares me. Plus, all the stuff that we did at the gauntlet. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on that that was going on there that, like. No one else really understands. Yeah. Something keeps popping up that is entangled with these people is this lantern guy. I, If it's the same guy that I recognize from that recording from the day I met you all, how do you all know this figure? You all know the voice, right? That the lantern or whoever it is that's we, we, trying to contact us, right? We do, but we, I mean, other than Maude, we the rest of us still don't know how we know him. How do you know him? Met him in the bar. Uh, my bar? No, no. Because I, I don't. He might have been in your bar. In fact, I'm pretty sure that he was at some point. That's the but. thing. I remember a figure dumping all the change they had on my table and telling me to chase off anyone after him. And I recognized that voice. But I didn't recognize it just from that time. I feel like I've known that voice forever. I've known it for years. But I don't know why. Um, uh, you, like, Glorious, do you ever listen to yes, radio? Yeah, we play the local town radio at the bar. Oh, what, what kind of... I don't even know if you would remember is the thing. Ma talked about... <laughs> Ma talked about how how Match explained that he was a part of a of a radio talk show, like telling stories. Could is it possible that you could have heard that before? Like he talked because he talked about how people were wronged by the Legion, right? Ma, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so Lantern, yeah, he had this radio show where he uh, would tell stories about, like, underdogs that he had met in defiance of the Legion, and it, uh, I don't know, eventually one day they they got pissed off at him and 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 chased him out of the station and shut down his show, but oh, I don't know. there's something I could point out. That kinda of sounds familiar. Okay. At some point I don't remember the exact time period, but we switched from playing local radio to uh to uh out of town. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. At some point we switched frequencies. I think it became unavailable. Okay. But like I said, I don't remember why. It's all cloudy. But I feel like I should remember why because I I never mess with any of that shit. Well, but that's old fashioned. But that's what match. That's what that's what happened though is that he erased himself from us so we wouldn't remember. Maybe you knew him and he convinced you to change it. Maybe I didn't necessarily know him. Maybe he just was a fan. Could be. A fan of this show. Like I said, I listened before I changed stations. My radio bar, or my bar specifically played shows locally from the radio station in our town. And then we changed it at one because the frequency died off. So do you think that he might have been broadcasting from Palegrass? If there... I don't know where I heard that. If, if I had a chance to talk to this man and understand why I can't remember anything, it's, it's hard for me to clarify because I don't remember n- shit. None of us remember. Uh, I, I mean... But it sounds like this. I don't remember why I changed frequencies. I knew that there, I knew there wasn't anything there to listen to anymore. I don't know. None of us. I don't remember anything. Okay, else. but glorious. do you remember specifically when you changed frequencies? Maybe you know, like a few months, like a month, month and a half ago. Andrew, does that seem to coincide with the same time that Merrick went missing, or not? Did that happen before? You, you joined the Legion after Merrick happened. His was a little bit earlier than that. Like, maybe a few months before that. Okay. Because I was going to say, I'm fairly But confident. it's, like, the same time, but like, the same year. But, but would, would this have been just before everyone showed up at Palegrass? No, was this would have been a little bit earlier okay. than that. Mm-hmm. Like well, a few weeks before that. Leah, what, what I was going to say is that I'm fairly confident my friend that I've been looking for was listening to Match, Match's show. And then I wasn't able to get in con- I wasn't able to hear what he was listening to anymore because it was just static. We lost the frequency. In the same way you did. But your radio and, just doesn't play anything, though. No, but, but, it, but it does. It's connected to Match. I, I don't know how. I can't explain it. But when I saw him, when I saw him in the Silhouette City, and and he was he was with my friend. I know it was Match. It had to be. And let me let me find my notes. Um. And I just I just remember they were they were talking, and he he was asking him if he was a lake person, and he's saying maybe he was a mountain kind of guy, and and that just reminded me of Match's story about the mountains. And I think we can get back in touch with him if I can f- fix this this fucking radio. But I don't know I don't know what to do or how to do that. But they said if uh, You said that uh, parts within that uh proto laundry had radio parts similar to this, right? Kind of, yeah. Maybe I can gather some of that and give it a whirl. I, I fix stuff around the bar all the time. Is it possible that it could be fixed with the... The blueprint machine? Yeah. 
I, uh, could be. I think I think it's worth it. I think it's worth a shot. It, might, it wouldn't be a bad idea because we haven't seen that before. It's better than going back to Puerto. <laughs> yeah, like looking for that. Uh, what was it? The screw? Um, yeah. You would have to have a screw loose like, to do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Speaking of screws loose, everybody in that town had their screw loose for the Red Angel. So uh, we're not. We're probably not welcome back. As long as we can get the voice. you burnt down, and they were having the same issue. I mean, we gotta, we gotta. That's why we gotta take care of this quickly because who knows? Yep. They were not completely gone, but they were getting there. You hear around this point, you're like, and you see, turn around, you see this big metal hand just grasping the wall. Ah! This, this double humanoid sized ah! visage of General Alfred Syracuse this ducks man. under the door and just kind of waltzes in with his. Big metal friggin' Iron Man chest popping out. <laughs> Dear friends! Traitor hides behind someone else. <laughs> Fair enough, friend. Your death would come just as quickly hiding behind a brick wall. Either way, that probably didn't bring you any comfort. And I apologize. <laughs> Your signals have been located throughout the facility, and I have been able to mark them at least. Uh, Visibly, we don't necessarily have a 3D map to give you, but we can tell you the locations of the signals, which we found. We found about nine of them. So, if you are, uh, I believe our agreement has come to fruition. Would you like to know where the signals are? <laughs> yes. No one has responded to me. Please. Please. I, we were just listening. I assumed I that I did not have my frequency set. Well, you're good. No, that's okay. I thought you were you were uh, on a roll there. I thought you weren't done. Thank you. Uh, okay. Anyway. Okay. So at this point, um, you see the figure's eyes kind of dart back and forth as he's kind of syncing up with other figures. All right. We have found, we have detected. One signal within the stalactites just above the tower here. We found a signal within the northern tunnels just to the east of us, the excavation tunnels in which we were looking about stuff. Another signal even further east where the wreckage of our, uh, uh, of our army were recovered by you from that creature. We have found three of these malleable signals scattered throughout the Psy Wing, where the mutants roam. Mm. One on the Minotaur Wing, one in the Genasi Wing, and one in the Seder Wing. Scattered about. There's one also, um, we've also detected one of them, uh, midway through the highway, although it doesn't seem to be on the ground level. It might be, uh, Suffering from a height difference from our scans. We found one in the remnants lab, although our robots weren't exactly able to locate the room it was associated with. Maybe your prying eyes would have better luck. And then we found one in the Zeta Wing, where the monsters are bred. That should be all nine. Alright. Okay. So, Sheepum here is Sheep saying, I think it's time for a fetch quest. Fetch quest! Fetch quest! Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, General. Absolutely! And now that we are left without a uh, means of. You good, bud? can go off to our next 2D. Um, what the fuck was that? It, he's, he kind of sounded like a 
that old, old hair. hair yeah a little bit but I don't I'm not really under the impression that we're actually talking to actual old hair before anyway maybe not um, if there are no duties for us at this point we will remain on standby and stand in the streets like vagrants Thank you, and have a great day. And remember, the Island Battalion is the best. Anyone who says otherwise is a heretic and deserves prosecution. Oh. Sounds good. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. um, have, have fun being a heretic. You're very, okay. very good. Um, mistress, can we, can we please talk to Spit? Yes, I would like to talk to Spit. <laughs> um, Spit, um, is, is, it, is it possible for someone, like, someone to tap in to any of your friends? Frequencies, not just you, but just any of the robots here, and like speak through it. Well, it depends on uh, what frequency the robots are on, getting their power from. What about Syracuse? Well, he should be getting them all from the same place all the other robots are. <laughs> Is that a frequency that could be tapped into? Well, the, all the robots here are being powered by the voice. Okay. What about you? Oh, I'm powered by a, a by a kinetic a, a kinetic generator inside me. So as long as I stay moving, I'll be okay. So you'd have no way to tap into the voice. Into no, I have no connection to any of these motherfuckers. Well, that's a relief. Respectfully, oh, it's just a perpetual motion machine. <laughs> yes. Um, you see, as he spins and like he's been kind of doing this. Yeah, weird if, if he stops, he dies. Yeah. Um, hey, yeah, Spit. Yeah, he just like moves Hi, I'm Spit. Uh, nice to meet you. Hi. Um. Uh, so, in, in your times around here, um, have you heard the designation of defector, and does that mean anything to you? Uh, I did. I, in fact, I searched up the term defector from one of your friends here. Well, I didn't necessarily look up defector. I found alpha, which, mm-hmm. according to your logs, means that. Okay. What, uh, Do you need a blood test? I could give you a blood test if you want. Um, what, no. why would My I want... My blood tests directly sync up with this computer's designation labs. So if you want to know your designation, I can help you out. Sure. I mean, is it like okay. a lot of blood? Well, I just kind of have to shake your hand. I don't actually retract blood. This is the future, you see, so as long as I... Can... I'm ready. Oh. You don't have to keep convincing me. Oh, here we go. Wow! Ah! Calm down there, and you're being a little dramatic. I'm just kidding. I was trying to scare. I was trying to prank them, Spit. Pr- that, that doesn't make any sense. If you want to prank them, like today's the first day I missed Claw Man. <laughs> <laughs> he would have loved that prank. Anyway, from and just just Hostel so wouldn't have cared for it. it. Had nothing to do with Buddy. He would water. never <laughs> care for it. I was gonna say, if you really want to pull a prank, you get a bucket of water or a trash can of water. <laughs> <laughs> All the best pranks start with trash cans full of water. I feel like Trader would have a better prank up his sleeve. Uh, yes. You fall <laughs> under the Delta designation. Oh. Delta, which means that your soul has been awakened to a soldier capability. I knew that. <clears throat> Okay. Let's all do it. It'll be fun. That's, okay. Yeah, it's, it's just like a STD test. Yeah, those are really fun. It's important it's before great. filming. <laughs> You're filming it? it? No, I would never film this. What? <laughs> Sheep got it. <laughs> Sheep was trying to frantically put away. So wait, you, you brought him away or are we done? <laughs> well, it's just punishment. Oh. <laughs> Just let him ah! enjoy his porn. Why does it hurt you? I'm back. Yeah, he can enjoy his porn next. if he does it in silence. Would you like a free test? Sure. Here we go. Cold has it. You also have the Delta designation. Congratulations. Oh, what about what about me, Smith? You I think it's gonna be the same for all of us. Well, I don't oh, know why it's like switched. Yeah, that's uh, that's bizarre. Why did we do that? Where did Andy, we get in there? Excellent tell <laughs> Andy's was different, so... Hello there, Mr. Bond. Oh, I'll like shake that. hands with you now. Okay. So that you know what your designation is. Was okay. that because he was ascended differently? No. You have the Delta designation and the Chai designation. 
the the Kai, the, the Kai designation. Whatever. Kai. C H I. The DM might not know the pronunciations. Maybe it's different in this world. It is Kai. Maybe it's different. <laughs> I was in. So Let me be wrong, C J. So I'm just saying you're the DM. It's whatever. Uh, I'm trying to find that Kai. How's that spelled? C H I. It's at the bottom. Oh, it's at the bottom. That's why. Channel. What is? What is that? Chandler? I don't know. That's not. That doesn't seem like its previous uh designation. Okay. I don't think Chai had one by the time I was researching it. Chai. Chai. I don't like this guy. <laughs> Me neither. Let's kill him. Yeah, let's do it. They're also. Uh... I hide. Well, what separates you from everyone else? Um, Why would you have something that's different? Oh, I've got I've got this artificial arm. That's pretty weird. That's that's the only thing that I can think of anyway. <laughs> oh, that's pretty weird. What what if what if it's your 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 race? I fucked up. Um, I fucked up. You also yeah, have they... the you also have the new. <laughs> 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 I forgot about your arm, as Andrew. <laughs> You also have the new uh, designation. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. For that's what I thought he would say. So, it's probably because you're changing that. No, that's that's because of the. Uh, I wouldn't think. Shit. It was... You also have the Tsai. <laughs> the Tsai designation. Oh, Shade? But is it changeling? Oh. For mutation. Yeah. Okay, you're so Shade is for mutation. You're that makes a big sense. Weirdo. I, mean, I mean, I guess that the, the Legion would probably know about my changeling status, even though I don't really disclose it. Well, I'm just, I'm just aligning your blood work with, uh, with uh, pre-existing records from our uh, Okay, so it's not necessarily. So I didn't know what the he Legion didn't like stuff look is. us up. So, so it might not necessarily be that they know. Yeah, I don't know what your backstory is. No, like. he's just classifying you based on your blood. Gotcha. So as far as Chandler goes, I do have um, I do have a connection to some sort of uh, almost like a ghost that hangs out in a void. What? I do uh, want to say this: the uh, entity known as the Red Angel, uh, that, uh, we had in our records back then, also had the uh, the Kai designation. Oh, so out of character, it's your. Obelisk, I think that's the 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 specifically what allows me to communicate with uh, um, but yeah it would be the the obelisk yeah yeah because the because he's the, he's in there basically the Red Angel definitely so, somewhere, has one of those somewhere or the other one, one, ones of them okay um so yeah you so, have like you have like four that's pretty cool I would like I would like to show uh based on a video that we just watched of of the um. Of the Red Angel, um, I'd, I'd like to show you something and see kind of what you make of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, well, I, before we do that, does anyone else want to get their blood? Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, everybody, everybody bleed for spit. Okay. Bleed hey, for spit. I would do, die for spit. Hi, Miss Ember. You are a Delta. You also have pie. Oh, that sounds you, delicious. You've been holding out on us. What is that? You got what a kind key of lime? pie? Cherry? Listen, we can't all make this joke. What is pie? Pie is it's a pastry. Currently uh, experiencing the effects of short and long term psychological condition or dealing with pending soul based conditions. Stackable itself. Almost soul based. Soul based. I mean, what about you, mistress? Oh, oh, I would be happy why, to tell you as well. Oh, oh, is it your hands are so cold. By... Maybe that's just me. Like, I don't remember. Well, no, I you are that. also. Delta and Pi. Hmm. Could that be your his wizard thing? If you're both Pi? Um, mistress has some warlock in her. Yeah, I think it's the, the uh, that part of her is what's probably coming through. Is being from Malik that doesn't have any effect with my designation? Not according to this, okay. no. They would, that the racial stuff doesn't seem to matter. What about you, Mr. Glorious? Yeah, I'll check it out. And he checks it out. You're just Delta, buddy. Oh. Oh. Wow. Well, that makes me feel good. Thank not, you. Not just Delta. No, it's not just Delta. Yeah, I'm also You're just Delta. Delta. Yeah, so is Melody, and they're they're pretty they're pretty okay. I'm not even Delta myself. I'm Lambda. 
Like is there a robot? Artificial consciousness. Yeah. Since I technically don't have a soul, I, I don't fall under those designations. Isn't that great? I think you have a soul. Oh, thank you. It's Although so... your opinion isn't backed up by fact, I do appreciate the subject. <laughs> That's what an opinion is. I know. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that is what you said. Okay, so what were you about to show? I was about I was about to show I was I was about to show spit the obelisk. Yeah, go ahead and show me the obelisk. I'll, okay, and then I'll I'll do the I'll pop the thing in and it'll dramatically transform. Whoa! So I I had the craziest dream. What's that sound? I was standing in front of a crowd of people, and then I woke up. Oh. That's, um... That, uh... Huh. But you understand, I never dream. So this is very fascinating for me. No, that's... That actually... And, and this is all, like, telepathic communication. Yeah. I'm not saying this out loud. Okay. Uh, this all, um... I mean, that makes sense with, uh... Well, it makes sense and it doesn't make sense. Because some of our friends are also currently congregated in a crowd as part of like a hype mind. Oh, Why no. would you be there? This was during a theatrical production. I very much was performing the role of Hamlet. Um. Anyway, okay. let's change the subject. Okay. What did you need me for? Um, so basically, I, I mean, I have a friend here who just kind of, I'm gonna have him check out uh, well, I guess you basically, um, and see if he might have any history with you. Okay. Sir, I do trust you, that your judgment will do me benefit. Do you have any reservations about this? I am... You can feel free to speak your mind. I'm but a pawn. Me being able to speak to you is good enough for... Good enough for me at all. But do you have any reason not to trust this AI or this place? I don't know anything outside of your knowledge. So, no. I... If you trust them, I trust you. Okay. I'm just, yeah, because I just am trying to get some general knowledge here. Go ahead. Um, fig maybe figure out some more about maybe where you came from. Well, once you're done having your weird schizophrenic conversation, can I, uh, I'll be happy to do your wait, work. Wait, did you hear that? No, I just heard you talking to yourself. Oh, well, I was, that was all in my head. Like, Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I thought I clarified that. I no, just, uh, I thought you were just talking there. That was kind of strange. Um, <laughs> no, no, anyway, I, would you like me to check your friend here? I mean, yeah, do what you can. Yeah, you for should, sure. I'll, uh, I'll let you know that there, uh, I can't explain it, but there is some sort of uh, soul inside of here that uh, uh, that I can communicate with. Um, but I don't think you'll be harming him just by uh, doing your thing. So. Okay, let's see. And he puts his hand on the obelisk. Well, I'm not detecting any blood from this. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty synthetic, I think. Do you mind if I take your readings again? I'm not getting anything from this. That's fine. Oh, okay. Uh, you're a lucky dog. You actually have an extra designation now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have Delta, you have Psy, you have Nu. You have Cha Kai, and you also have the Alpha. Alpha, okay. That's Defector, right? Well, according to our updated regimen, uh, yeah. I don't necessarily know what that means, though. Alpha was a pla uh, placeholder term we used before we found it again. Right. Um, and you wouldn't know anything more about specifically what uh, the alpha designation or the defector designation would I be. I knew that art of you, I was saving it for something special. I didn't want to give anything, just anything, or, uh, the alpha. They were waiting, they were holding out for something great. So that makes you really special, Mom. I mean, it kind of scares me, to be honest, but maybe... Puts me maybe a little closer to some answers. 
A lot going on. Um, well, thanks, Ben. I'll take one. Um, um, I do have something I want to bring up. Just since I've been listening for the past several days. Someone mentioned a name I recognize. Who's that? Who? She was a friend of ours. Like a real life friend? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like you actually, like you're an actual friend with them? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess friendship is relative, but I think she was her friend. She. But they were a real person. Yeah, yeah. we traveled with her for about a week. Huh. That's weird. Why is that, Why is weird? that weird? No reason. Mm, no, that's not good enough. Tell us, tell us why, why that's that weird? weird. I've heard the name before, but I only heard a story. What, what was the story? There's no story. What? You said you heard the name in a story, but there is no story? There's no story. Because it was deleted. Spit's demeanor has changed dramatically. Why are you oh, sad, Spit? What's, What's wrong? Well, something important I found. Make a persuasion check, Mistress. As it seems like Spit is actively fighting your your spell against you right now. Okay. Sorry, I navigated to a different character. Yeah. Okay. So for persuasion, that's going to be an eighteen. <coughs> Do you not trust us? I trust you. Let's just help. You know, you know when something matters to you, and you don't like to give it away. Yeah. Well, this is this is one of the only things that I have. Well, what if we all tell you something that matters to us? Other stories? Yeah. I mean, whatever you want. You don't have to be vulnerable by yourself. <laughs> the figure pops open a piece of his chest. And mm -hmm. You see embedded deep within the core, right above where the harpoon normally <coughs> would shoot out wrapped up in a bunch of wires that now lights up as slightly as though it was adjusted to be visible. It's the edge of one of these file documents. Oh. The type of documents you've been putting into this computer to read stuff. I was given this by someone. I don't remember who. But I remember the name Fisting. May I ask that you place this into the port there, into the place where the file document things go? Says she, not mistress. Yeah. <laughs> mistress would use the correct yeah. for it. You see, at this moment, you see the command be issued towards Spit. See Spitz's eyes dart back and forth during this time period. And something changes 
in like the LEDs of the eyes. They go from this blue that they always have been to this yellow. Uh, and the creature just stops and stares at you. And its hand begins to shake as it sits here motionless. It reaches in shakily into its chest, pulls out this or it's attempting to pull out this file. And it's pulling out, it never breaks eye contact with you. It doesn't make any noise. It just stares as its hand shakes. And the longer it stays here in this state, the more it shakes trying to pull it out. And once it gets to about halfway out of the chest, its eyes go black. Oh. Desynchronizes, goes back to the, the space that you keep it in as a familiar, as Spit has died from staying still for too long. I'd like to try to pull Spit's corpse out of that space. You'd have to recast the spell. So. I'm stuck here because as a player, I did not want to interrupt you. Oh, <laughs> but if we noticed that you but weren't moving, we probably this would have mistress absolutely would have started moving spit. Because I, I figured that he was maybe like rocking well, back that, and forth or something while he did this. But. Well, this is the thing; like, it was very subtle. Yeah, and like you guys were very fo- like it was something like you were very focused on this, but I feel like. He the way I, himself, essentially. I was gonna say the way I interpret this is that he is so reluctant to give this that he intentionally slowed himself down to kill himself. That's yeah. what it seemed like. Uh, spit. Like the entire time you were describing this, I was thinking, okay, Mistress would be like moving him, but I don't want to interrupt the description. Feel free, feel free to shout at me if okay. you do want to make those in the future. Yeah. I, I, I'm interruptible as a DM. Because if you guys want to do something, I'll talk for hours. But here, yeah, if you just want to recast it here. Well, I can't. Oh, you can't? I don't have the materials. Oh. Like, it requires, it's a, it, when a spell calls out a specific amount of gold pieces worth of materials, you need to have those specific materials to cast the spell. I have used up all of my stock of materials that can be used to cast oh, Find Familiar. No. So we're just with that. We're, we're spitless. Well, I mean, what do you need? We'll you have to get some money? more coins. Yeah. Well, no, like, I have the money, but you have to, like, yeah, materials the rules are... is written. You have to have the exact wording material components, okay. not just the vague amount of money unless the DM says, oh, you can go and buy it in this place. Like... In theory, if you find, like the raw materials for the money, I would allow it. It's like, just for this situation, it's not that specific. So yeah, because like, some... Mistress can afford to cast Find Familiar. Yeah. She just, like, I specifically marked out the last time I cast Find Familiar, I marked off the last of, like, the specific material component. It is... Uh, yeah, ten gold pieces worth of charcoal, incense, and herbs that are consumed by a fire in a brass brazier. Okay. Um, so if you want to just, like, let me mark off ten gold pieces worth of monies. Uh, in this universe, mm-hmm. because currency is interchangeable at this point, in theory, you'd be able to... Uh, Because all this is hooked up digitally, no, your tablets don't put. You're not connected to the network right now. I'd say if you find ten dollars worth of material to use, you'd be able to do it. Okay, like just a ten dollars worth of anything. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh. It just has to burn up like a gold's worth of ten dollars. Yeah, uh, I 
I guess. Can you just throw two and four coins into a glass measure? I'll make this easier for you. <laughs> Can I just mark you off know, the ten? I have some change on me if you need it. Okay. Right. Speaks up. What? How much do you need? I got a twenty. Uh, that'll do. I burn it. I, I the player bill. a little confused as to like the mechanics of how find familiar is cast in this world. <laughs> well, I'd say because it's a uh, it's kind of updated to how the world would work. Mm -hmm. It would essentially focus on a like a currency basis or uh, just a raw material. So either draw specifically from your account or. Okay. It's always kind of weird, like that a spell would know what the currency, what like what currency is. Well, no, because like, like the idea isn't that it is. You are losing the currency value. It is that you are using these materials. Yeah. That if you were to go out into the world and buy them, cost ten gold pieces. Mm -hmm. Like in standard rules as written. So what are the what are the materials again? So it is charcoal, incense, and herbs. <clears throat> oh okay. If and like. Mistress used up the last of her charcoal, incense, and herbs. Oh, that's right. To summon, okay. uh, like, to revive, spit the last. Yeah, if that's died. if that's the case, you guys might need to uh, find a different way to find him and okay. to summon him in. I thought it was just. Damn uh, it. I thought it was just like the the currency basis. No, oh, yeah, like you might, the. You might need to find a way to get that then. Yeah, the currency is used to indicate that, like, a this is how much it would cost for you to just go out and buy these materials. Mm -hmm. And B, to indicate that you cannot use your arcane focus to replace those specific materials. Uh, like you can with most material components. Well, maybe this place self-sustains. Uh, maybe we can find some around here and get spit back if they have important information about Fisty. Um, well, I'll throw this out here. Can we ask your robot friend again? Syracuse to see if they have any. Yeah. Well, just if there's a materials. natural deposit of this stuff around. This mm -hmm. place has caves. This place has vegetation around. Well, I mean, yeah, they could even just have a kitchen. He may know. <laughs> but do they have any stoners? Because without stoners, they'll probably have severe lack of incense. There's no herb. An herb. And herb. There's herb. All that we can find out. Like, uh, we just go up to the so bar yeah. and get into the kitchen and. Still some oregano? Yeah. <laughs> Mistress will go and try to find Etheridge out on the street. Okay. Etheridge is right outside the tower. He's standing there uh, chastising a smaller robot. And just, like, Dylan, are you looking this up, like, double-checking me here? Is that what's... I know that sometimes how I... On the component stuff? Yeah, the material components. I, I want to make sure, like, I no, am I right on this. Right on like, all of that, yeah. I looked at yeah. the component pouch, but that's everything but one that yeah. So I assume focus is working the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, she uh, she'll find Etheridge, Syracuse, the however many, and uh, inquire as to where she might be able to find any of these materials here. So you say you need to find herbs, incense, and charcoal, correct? Yes. Well, we can always acquire charcoal from. Uh, rudimentary fuel storages, but we'd have to send a group of people up into the stalactites, unless you're heading up there already. Well, we might be. That's where one of the signals is, right? Yes, uh, because in theory, uh, a lot of those old uh, storage vats relied on uh, basic heating components, because there's so many of them, we couldn't quite afford to power it all. That would make sense. Some places simply kept rooms heated on their own. Well, um, incense and herbs, well, they'd probably in the end, uh, be somewhere in the underground farms. Uh, farms are kept in the side wing, used to feed and house the, uh, the different uh, slave races kept under there. I'm sure we'd be able to procure some for you there. All right. Would you willing, be willing for me to fetch these, or is the information enough for you? Because I will, I will be honest with you, I am a military grass kill, uh, kill bot, and 
fetching farming materials is a bit outside of my uh, expertise. I th think we can just get them when we go to the places. Fantastic! I'm glad I could be of help. And I will be here if more help is needed. Thanks, General. All right. And so before we take a small break, um, what are you guys, where are you guys wanting to go next after this? Or if there's any other conversations you want to have? Dude, you're essentially done at the tower for now. Well, in addition to finding the stuff to get, to get um, spit back, I also would like to go back and look at the radio parts. Yes, so that would be you know, the part of laundry in the remnants lab. Which, was there a malleable signal there? There is one close to there, yeah. There Early was the one remnants in the remnants lab, right? There's one in the remnants lab, and there's one kind of, there's one on the bridge in between there and the avatar storage that you'd be able to find. Okay. Because there was one in the tower, or in the stalactites. That essentially says, like, right above the tower, somewhere up in the stalactites. So we could... Try to do that first and then head towards the remnants lab and put the laundry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, that sounds good to me. Cool. Okay. So with that, let's take a small break. A, a, sh a, a, a small break. Grab something to drink. The general It's just one of these, like, <laughs> stupid uh, days robots. days or a lot. What is with this cat? He's a, he's a lap baby. He when, when I when I play games, he will literally sit on my lap and sleep the entire time. Like for actual hours, he will just sit on my lap. Like if you literally, if you would literally rather kill yourself, then the answer to would you be willing is no. <laughs> but that also does kind of reflect on how passionate he is on this. Uh, but then again, you would notice didn't necessarily seem himself as he was doing this. Like, something changed inside of him. Like, his eyes changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. This might not necessarily have been spit. Maybe. Maybe. Next time someone on everybody has to grab an arm, just rip them open, and just drink <laughs> 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 that. Screaming. Kali Ma, the robot. Kali Ma! I just imagine Spit's like a fan. Pick him up and his body just starts clicking. <laughs> just trying to move. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, legs hurt he's just so like bad. such an older type oh, of robot yeah. from all I'm the other ones here. He just has so to keep right? moving. It's oh. so stupid. He's like, no! What's your problem? No. What's oh. He's fucking tired. Did he have to wear the cone at all? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, wait, because you didn't get up there. He was already fixed. Right? Yeah, but he'd only been fixed for one day when I got him. And he did, didn't work. Oh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Prudence had to wear a cone. Prudence, Prudence is a bitch. So. The cone. <laughs> I like Prudence. So it doesn't happens. mean she's not a bitch. <laughs> you still like someone who's a bitch. Oh. Your son of Meow is a ridiculous. He sounded so angry earlier when Kyle picked him up. He was just like. <laughs> I sent a little cold. video to Emmy. No, his, his meow has always sounded like that. I know, he's always had a cold. <laughs> he's just sneezing all over me earlier. Yeah. He, he blows actual snot bubbles. It's horrible. Did you, did yeah. Your cat's not actually sick, just broken. I think he has a cold. Maybe he has allergies. Take him back for a refund. No. Can you exchange him? No, I love him. <laughs> you can have one of ours. I just like making sheep. Well, I can't. Tell me no. <laughs> that is actively why I went some well went elsewhere because I said I want one of the cats. And you guys said no. They're clean. They're gonna go live outdoors. Yep. <laughs> and, and excuse me for excuse me for being concerned about that when all but one of my cats that lived outdoors died. <sighs> Do you yeah. think so? And they lived in the country. Probably not going to see her again. What are the odds? Yeah. She's an infant. I mean, she was. My <laughs> <laughs> son! So Gilmore. Oh. Are you guys both wearing a Tokyo? Yes, so oh, so yes we are. It's, it's, only, it's only the best band. Yeah, Andrew, you know this? We're both wearing Kohi shirts. Cute. Wow. I, I have that same one, actually. It's not quite as cute as <laughs> kind of for me as how you wore the exact same Do thing. you want me to <laughs> lie? These are so gay. Oh, that was so funny. Uh, so I was like, a was like, wow, I like that shirt. And then she's like, 
Wait. Wait. It's it's two. I feel so much better. It's it's a good song. I heard Jared's Lavender Lemon vodka's right, right. as good as mine. You guys didn't have the actual recipe for him. <laughs> I, I texted it to him. So right from there, you guys are in the tower. Know. You've learned the location of what? these, uh... Essentially, the location of these uh, different areas. And I can remind you as well, if you... Although I assume some of you kind of wrote down general locations of where they might be. Yeah. Of uh, the different signals, kind of have a general idea of where you can locate the components to rebring back Spit and learn a bit, a little bit about why Spit knew FISD. So the, the location that the general was describing is in like the stalactites above the tower? He right? said that he detected one just like within the stalactites right above where the signal, where and, the voice was. And so that's he, around where those provisions are. He and said. Also, yeah, he said like some of those old rooms kind of kept around old materials yeah. like okay. that. And so in theory, if you searched enough, you could find some. Okay. But there was a signal located in the stalactite, which you remembered, you guys did sleep up there one night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was like the first, no. our, our first night here. Oh. Our first night. Uh, when we I'm thought sick of being in this this. hole. This, this, this hole. hole. Ugh. Every fucking campaign, they just want to put me in a goddamn hole. It's not where I want to be. Oh, we've, we've only Nobody been in a, mm, in a hole. We've right only been this. in a hole for two out of the three arcs. Because <laughs> <laughs> like it's true. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet was a hole. This is a hole. This is a whole lot of shit. <laughs> is what is what the other one was. Uh, a whole lot of us never being able to go back to a bunch of towns. Yeah. Fuck okay. yeah. So, any other Fuck conversations anyway. you have before you uh, decide where you want to go? Um. I, I I just will will say basically what I said that I recommend that that's where we head. Kill two birds with one stone. I don't think we should oh. kill any birds, personally. Okay. One of those hissing dogs. So, you'd have a lead at least where to go if you wanted to get up to the slag tides. He hisses and then I eat. And is there a way to get up there without a grappling hook? Um, <laughs> you'd have to find a way. There's doesn't look. There's not a visible bridge up there. You got there via the grappling hook. Was that one of yours? So someone would have to find a way to get up there. Andrew, did you realize you bought another diet soda? Yes, I did. So annoying. I didn't even realize so Pal said something. It tastes the same. I like Dr. Pepper Zero. You say so. Dr. Pepper Zero doesn't it's taste okay, good. but I noticed. Yeah. And you, you, I thought you, it was like one of those weird Madden or like football <laughs> like design decals on it. on it. I was like, oh, yeah. whatever. It's John, it's John Madden right there. That's him. It's him. Didn't he like retire? No, he died. Or? Oh, he died. Though. He died a few months ago. No. He retired from life. That's yes, he, he retired from this mortal coil. He died. That's it. <laughs> okay. So, were you guys wanting to try to figure out how to get up there? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, you guys wander outside the tower. You forward. see that window that was blown out from before on the side of the stone tower, and then essentially where you grappled up to the, the this low hanging stalactite that's up above. Boy, if only we had someone with a grapple hook to get up there. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Yeah, that wasn't directed at anyone in the party. Uh, how that's, high up is it? It's like about a couple hundred feet. Right? Yeah, about three, four hundred feet up. Mm, I can technically dimension door. It's so too far to thinking. throw a rope. But Probably. you have to throw it real hard. Or it's got glorious. Uh, oh yeah, you got me! I can jump that high. I really Let's go. Go. You can throw the rope. He jumps like a fuck. Oh, he God. jumps like fucking Homelander. And just <laughs> I was thinking fucking Hulk. <laughs> You know how shocking that would be if that happened. Well, that <laughs> Just defy physics. It anyway. makes sense. So how would you want to approach that? Uh, um. So how did so we, the, before we got down just using spit scrabbling capability? Um. Well, if Melody just dimensions door. Like throws down a rope or something. I will say, well, yeah, take the, yeah take the that I have, I only really have enough energy to Dimension Door once, mm -hmm. and I could do it one additional time at a higher level, but that literally zaps all of my high level slots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, and how long so is it? And you isn't rope usually only like fifty feet. Depends on the item mm. stat. If it's you just, have the it's just item. beneath dimension boring all of those. Yeah, the item I didn't tell you. Oh, dimension boring. I don't think I actually. Just bold adventurers get rope. I mean, I think it's fifty feet. Yep. Fifty feet. Yeah. We could tie all of our rope together. It, how are we gonna get it up there? Rope. Well, what if I just do one of my, my fine familiar spells and then have my hawk take it up there? You have a fine familiar. T- mm-hmm. Well, if you're well, why don't you just yeah <laughs> give her give her the give her the material components? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not one that keeps track of that shit. So that's I don't why even I didn't think of that. I don't. I don't either. even have it prepared anyway, so it doesn't even fucking. <laughs> it's a ritual. You don't need it prepared. You just need to add ten minutes. Ooh. Ooh. It's Body uh, massage. I know I never pay attention to the components. But I guess Jeez. there's really no way up there, is there? I mean, I can do I mean, it. I just won't like it. I guess I can just well, propel would, down. I'll do a lot of things, but I don't like that would really get. Well, but I can tie the rope up there. Well, do we have three so hundred feet worth of rope? Mm-hmm. We should each have 50 feet. We can pull our rope together. Why don't you have any rope, you weirdo? Does Mistress look like someone who carries around rope? Yes. Yes, if that it's is con- your whole it, character's <laughs> gimmick. If it's convenient for our group, yes, I think she would. Let's say this to the group. Yeah, well, you're kind of slack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 kind of, what kind of BDSM queen is she? Mistress has handcuffs. She has chains. She has a whip. Okay, well, let's use Just the chains. Just because she has no rope. Let's use the how long, chains. How long is your whip? Huh? How long are your chains? How long is that whip? No, Mistress does not actually have a whip. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. But show oh boy will she. <laughs> I'm going to disguise myself as someone who cares with my disguise kit. Uh, oh <laughs> well, if we don't have a direct <laughs> way up to this now, we might go somewhere else then. Maybe that'd be best That's because. Nice. Uh, Let's do it. Maybe down to the side wing? Do you guys want to go to the side wing? I, yeah, I want, I, want to, I want to fix my radio. That's fine. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, that sounds like the next best step then. Because uh, that's better than going back to Quarto. Mm. Okay. We don't go there anymore. You know there's a way to travel to... To... There, you have a malleable signal that you'd be able to link onto from your static grabber mm. on the far west side of the facility. Okay. That, mm. As you correlate it from your uh, the map on the second floor, because... Uh, Relatively in the Who same position as where the sideway was. Then let's yoink ourselves that way. Okay. Okay. So you spawn a signal out in front of you, and it covers the group. You select it over to far west signal on the map. And you despawn the signal you guys are in, and you're standing in this dark highway. Eris, it's immediately much colder than what it used to be. The map or the uh, the road continues much further along. You, you can tell now you this is way further west than you've traveled before. This this has to be much. You don't recognize any of the landscape around you. This is much further than where the Avatar storage was. So it's probably colder because we're further away from like whatever natural like, mm-hmm. heat source this place emits. Okay. You do notice, however, there is this big doorway, just this large vertical doorway that uh, leads down a south hallway where the highway branches off and you're able to travel off and go down that way. Okay. Uh, Does everybody want to go down that that dark hallway? Um, I mean, if we must. I mean, that's kind of why we came here. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> As you travel down the hallway here, Ember, something in your pockets begins to vibrate ferociously. Mm. <gasps> what is it? <laughs> it's my bag. It's, it's my your bag. thermos. <gasps> is this where the, um, what are they called? The Ganavi are? Is that what they are? The Genasi? This Genasi. is, according to them, they had several wings. The Ganasi wing was one of these. It's but the your... Your pockets are vibrating ferociously, uh-huh. like almost like it's like a phone ringing, like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Is it one of your dirty phones? No. <laughs> <laughs> they don't work down here. Those are in my, my fanny pack. Uh, I get it out. You pull it out? Yeah. She'll hold it in her hand. Big Big ass. Vision okay, darkens for just a second. If you're receiving this message, uh, just remember, I'm not a great guy to be indebted to. Get to work, sweet cheeks. I'm waiting. And then your vision on your hands. Am I the only one that heard that? You are not the that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Did we at least see her, like... You see her pull this out, and she just stops in her tracks. I don't know, this for a second. Are you good? Yeah. I just remembered that, um, like, I needed to come here anyway. For what? Uh, I wanted to see those uh, genasi I've never seen any before. Okay. So she's on my... I want to insight. Insight check! I want to insight this sketchy bitch. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Terrible person. Uh, forever wishing I chose luck. Uh, six. Six. Oh, nope. I rolled a 12 on the die. Yeah. So. I'll do an inside check. Inside check. Oh, yeah. why am I not a on She's so insightful. I'm going to use my inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is a 12. So not just... Oh, yeah. No, my deception's actually a negative one. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you beat it. Oh. You can tell... Yeah, that's not a... That's not entirely... <clears throat> not fully... <laughs> She's here for ulterior. Right. That you, you, you work in deception. She's here for ulterior motives. She's being a sketchy. I know tell. that I'm not a member of the group right now, <laughs> but yeah, it seems not. as though you're not. Ember, quit being a bitch. Truth. What? Huh? Is that true? I don't, still don't I, trust this I don't guy. Okay? To, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll Mod. keep my. I'll keep okay, my but Mod. Like has Glorious roll Mod almost killed him. After you say that, yeah. I know, and I stopped him. <clears throat> Glorious roll inside out. Just, she says. <coughs> That's a nineteen. Yeah. Uh, that is kind of bizarre that you would bring this up all of a sudden. What's going on? What is that? This? Yeah. What is that? Well, we tried to fill it with water, and it just started like, and it didn't fill up or anything. Well, then why did you pull it out now, though? It started, like, buzzing. Did you drop your phone in there? <laughs> I mean, is there a reason why you weren't going to tell us about Listen, that? Listen, did you drop one of your infinite supply of phones in there? <laughs> no, oh. they're in the fanny bag. Also, just, you know, as a uh, Padawan of myself, I hope that uh, you would be honest with me here, as uh, I don't detect that. Whisper to Ember. He's really big. You should probably tell the truth. <laughs> I'm just saying, if this affects us, I'm, I need to know this. It doesn't affect you guys. Then what's the problem? Do you not trust her? There's not like, a problem. I just... If there's not a problem, then you shouldn't have an issue with telling us. I don't get it. <laughs> I hate to pry into your business, but. My thermos came with a note whenever we all got our shit that I need to fill this with Janazi blood. Okay. Okay, and then we happen to stop by here and there's Janazi. Who? Just waiting to be done. Why? <laughs> what does that mean? It's just what my notes say. Another deception check. <laughs> <sighs> Even a nat 20, I'd still Why you always lying? Why the fuck you lying? That's a two. Two. Oh, man, my, his <laughs> passive inside. Uh, which, make, which makes sense, because she's like... Amber, or Amber's, like, actively, Terrible like, shitting her pants as she's lying. Listen. Worst liar. There's so nothing I've talks. said here. Listen, I can be put in jail for treason for telling you the stuff I've told you here. None of us are going to judge you. We just need to know in case it's important. And if it's not important, then it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, if it's not important, then why would you lie about it? It just, it doesn't seem, I mean, I guess I can't speak for everybody. Maybe everybody's lying, but I've been telling the truth this whole time. 
and so I just it'd be nice if if in these you know life or death situations we could you know all be honest with each other also I'm just gonna pop in and say sorry for starting all of this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy I didn't realize that this would all happen to yourself no, this is important like if something is happening I appreciated what mistress told us it's important to know when a god is taking over your brain it's important if all of a sudden, you need to fill up a jar with blood. That's the Celestian, okay? Oh. It's from the Celestian. What? Did you trade something with him? That guy. Why would he want that? I have no he idea. Has, doesn't have a use for, for Genasi blood. <laughs> Why do I, you... She couldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, thank you for telling me, but... Can we just move on? Do you want to, you don't want to elaborate on that at all? No? Okay. No one else? Hey. Okay. That's a little gray. But. I mean, it's a little weird, but. We have bigger still, issues. We have never to talk. I'm still personally just trying to get into this group, so. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on going. That's fine. Do you intend to go about getting this Janasi blood? I don't know. I didn't intend to blob you into this little errand either. But I mean, yeah, here we are. Well, this way we can help you. We're here to help if you need it, because we don't want you doing anything dangerous. Just continue walking. <laughs> Just uh, try not to kill anyone useful. <laughs> I appreciate it. Like yourself. And yeah. so is that why you stopped earlier? What's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, is that why you stopped when you pulled it out? Or? Yeah, I just had a reminder of... That's crazy. Well, fine. Uh, it doesn't involve me. I have no reason to question you any further. Let's continue. It's basically just like a little deeper, like... Pager. That uh, the Celestian pre recorded this message on there <laughs> just to play anytime she gets near a Genasi. <laughs> it's, like a beacon. it's funny, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's well, that's, that's kind of how I interpreted it. So, <laughs> I'm close to one, like, hey, remember what you gotta do. Has anybody else sketched out by this? Was this the same time that you and Hosta went together? Or was that? When I got this? Yeah. No, when we all got, like, that stuff in that box or whatever. Oh, okay. Then that's when I got this one. Okay. Did you cut, were you one of the ones that came with me? With Hostel whenever we went mm -hmm. to get, like, our armor It was, armor like, and you, stuff. me, and Mod. Yep. yep. The three of you guys. And then Mistress, of course, but she was there already. Can we, like, torture somebody in a room or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Yep. Good times. So you guys travel uh, further down this hallway where eventually you enter into this large metal clearing. The ceiling's so high you can <coughs> hardly see the surface and it leads to this massive steel double, uh, double doors here where you see stationed over at the far right corner uh, near the doors is this pedestal that has a lever attached to it here. The lever is uh, has four sections built into it here, kind of like a gear shift. You pull it out, bring it up, and bring it to the next one. Each one is labeled one through four. Um, the lever is currently all the way at the fourth position right now. In this expanse right now, it doesn't necessarily seem like there's anything else here, although this room does seem large enough to be able to drive a vehicle into. And it's same with the doors. Like, once the doors are open, you feel like, yeah, this was built specifically for like large vehicles mm. and whatnot to be able to travel into. Okay. So that's what's in front of you right now. Do you uh, want to mess around with some levers? Just mess around with them? Yeah. I mean, it sounds kind of dangerous, well, but. The last time you messed around with levers. Good, good things happen. You can mess with the levers. Mm, pull the lever, Pond. The lever. <laughs> um, mistress. Yeah. Uh, 
if if you could recommend a lever to pull, which one would you recommend? Like essentially like a vertical lever, like it's at the bottom, you pull it out and bring it to one of the other three number slots. Okay. Like one's yeah, at the top, four at the bottom. Situation. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Got it. So okay. as if this were a giant elevator type contraction. Something like that, like it's, more yeah, it's kind of simple. Like it's not a button based, but then because it's at what position is it at now? Four. Four? Okay. At the very bottom. So uh, it probably goes up. Mr. Still probably set it like up to the top one. Okay. Ooh. You grab that. You grab the lever and you pull it out to the right, bring it all the way up, bring it over. As you do this, you hear the sound of you know only like the like the world's shittiest transmission shifting gears. <laughs> you hear Got to engage the clutch. <laughs> Just this creaking noise mm-hmm. echoing from underneath you. Just this. Oh, I hate that. This is gonna step away. Why does why does the elevator sound like an Eldridge beam? It's essentially, just sounding like a motor starting up so slowly. An now you hear this. Insists for what, ten minutes. Oh man! And eventually, we need cast line from Lily. I was gonna say, and it's from behind the door, like from the cracks on the seams. You see dust flies through the edges of it, <coughs> and then oh man, so very much slowly dust. slides across open to this dark, like. Dark, like, cargo-esque elevator, as of, like something that would like lift vehicles up to the top of a building or something. You see, you walk into this area here that isn't even closed off anymore. You just see the skeletal expanse of this facility, off this orange mist, off on the edges here, and then this elevator that seems as you walk through this large square expanse and peer off the edge here goes down the slant this uh, diagonal slope down downwards and it's being pulled up by a series of gears are there any like buildings that are hanging from a ceiling like instead of coming up out of the ground there like are skyscrapers a- there are actually you would be able to see some off the, the majority of the the expanse is off to your left. Once you enter into the elevator here, you look off what's here. And it's, uh, have you ever played Portal 2? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, at the very end of the game, when, like, everything's collapsed around, you're going down that, that, that spiral thing at the very end, you just see all the shit on the ceiling because everything's mm-hmm. falling down around yeah. you. That's what this looks like here, but it's not falling down. It's just kind of... Suspended. A space before that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then with just the empty abyss below it, and this orange, horrible, just light from below. Not like nerve like. <sighs> yeah. So, like, the description of this uh, uh, elevator just <clears throat> seems like such a good description of what the weird slanty elevators in the Genesis Evangelion. That's what I'm, yeah. kind of what I'm going off, like that kind of facility, yeah. Yeah. Solid. Not solid. I don't want to be at the end of that show. <laughs> it all just comes tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. Anyway. I know nothing else about that show other than that. That's all you need to know. Um, that's what's about trivia. And in theory... Like, it's not nearly the jump up, maybe like 100 feet to like your nearest stalactite, but it's much further past the elevator, so it's still, it'd still be quite a feat to get to, but not nearly as hard as it would get to the other one. Well, shall we descend? Alright. Okay. Yay! Yeah. On the opposite end of the, essentially on the opposite <clears throat> end of the wall where that lever was, is a parallel lever. Um, it reads the same thing. Yeah, so Mr. Soul, once everyone is aboard, uh, say, how about we just take this one step at a time? And, like, addressing the group. 
Yeah, she accepts that. All right. Okay. It's fine to me. Then she'll set it to two. 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 So is this where we'll find one of the malleable signals? Is that what it was? You said there were three in the side wing. Okay. According to them, there seemed to be one on each wing. Like on each on four? Each yeah. Okay. Cool. But not the one that we were just. You were just on the top. Floor. We were. Right. We were at like the ground floor. The three floors of the side wing should be two, three, and four. Yes. Okay. If I'm understanding how. No, that's yeah, right. That's that's how I understood it. it was, the, the, we brought the elevator up from the fourth floor. Yeah. From. Yeah. And now. It's like gauntlet rules. Where the top, where the top floor is the lowest number. Yeah, you go down. That's yeah. Down. Anyway, you transition the gears downwards here. And you hear a click come from the other side, almost as if uh, some mechanics had moved the gear on the other end, the other lever that you had just pulled up down a spot. And then the floor around you begins to shake, and the door closes. And then you begin going on this diagonal slope downwards, and you hear just this monstrously loud set of gears bringing you downwards. Everyone make a perception check for me. I'm going to perceive the shit out of this thing. Uh, 18, 13. 18? 11. Also 11. Oh! Twinsies. Anytime we roll the same. 15? 13. 13. Okay. So, the three of you here, as you guys are all just peering off to the expanse to your left here and seeing yourself descend from this black that's above. You notice if you were close to the top that these slide sites are just teeming with life. You see the spots where the windows would be, just uh, insectoid creatures scurrying across the outside of it. They're ew, very large, like Australia large, Gross. scattering across the top here. Um, this this place here is long forsaken from use, even from the robots themselves that don't even travel these parts. And it's clear because the local wildlife that's escaped from the Zeta Wing have very much repopulated this area. 15 and 18 here. Notice something off the distance. As Especially now that the elevator started moving again, you see from one of the stalactites, which you had only assumed was just like a cluster off the distance, suddenly shift like this cubic stalactite, which essentially looked just very much triangular breaks off as though like 30 birds skip, uh, like flew off of it all at once these are no birds though this is way too far away to be birds this big these black entities these feetless and armless entities that flap pitch black scatter off from this as the noise echoes outwards and then you can see the much smaller uh, cubic stalactite of the facility where they were perched on and gnarling up and they fly out in many different directions and as they fly outwards in the different directions you just hear this low deep howl like a wolf but more if I can describe it as like more reptilian it sounds colder it sounds more guttural not so much like a wolf but as like you know like a like a like a roar Rather Ooh. than a howl, just like a. I don't like that. From multiple different sources as they fly off. The mistress will uh, turn the melody here and say, well, that was unsettling. Uh, yeah. Make a nature check, you two, as well, if you Ooh. want. I'm not. 11. 11? I'm good at that. Melody, you don't necessarily know what these are, but you do recognize it. When you were standing over the giant hole in the mm, little bride's beak. That was the same. The 
to the same creatures. Okay, I will I will tell you that. Um, that is definitely, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely the same thing that I saw over the pit up, up above. That's terrifying. Yeah, it's not good. So these are probably the things that are, you know, eating the corpses. <coughs> Eventually, it comes to a stop around two minutes down their travels yeah. here. Uh, it's, while seeming slow, this elevator's traveled relatively faster than you would think it would for how okay. old and dementory it seems. Okay. 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 Um, it ends at this point, and the door that is next to here, off to your right, opens up. And down this long, expanding corridor that you'll be able to travel down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what's here, but... We're gonna find out! Something. Only one way to find out, right? Yeah, let's go. So you guys begin traveling down this hallway here find this area here is surprisingly lit up. You see the speckled uh, stalactites of the facility above you here are less of, of old foundation but more of just windows that beam light down at this point. They're uneven like a like a essentially like a Minecraft terrain. Ooh. <laughs> just like the blocks that jut out of different levels and whatnot. Some of them have windows that emit this this yellow light that shines down and illuminates above. It's not it's sunlight, is it? No, no. It's not. This is much dirtier, it feels like. Like an old fluorescent light that's seconds from burning out, but it doesn't seem to. And you travel down, and eventually you enter this clearing out that this the metal ground above you, uh, below your feet, you notice change as you step around. It becomes mm. softer flexible, more malleable, more squishy, more like wet. mud? Like mud, exactly. Okay. And you look down and you realize you're standing on soil. You're standing on earth. Oh. Hmm. And you're essentially standing on land. As you look out and you see this plain of dead, <laughs> uh, dead grass and unkept soil that leads all the way out to this big wall that just like coats the entirety of the back of this facility with multiple lights that shine out from above and just a line of robots that sit at the base of it, at the horizon of it. Do the robots look? So they look similar to the robots you've seen so far. Are they functional? They're moving. Are, okay. Good. They are moving. I was gonna say, are they alive? They are moving. They yeah, seem to just kind of be shifting back and forth. Some of them seem to be kind of like trying to move like big obstacles away like they're cleaning up. Okay. And you'd see some of them after they pick up stuff, throwing it off the edge of this precipice where the mud ends and this big yellow expanse starts where it falls down into oblivion. The mistress will try to approach them and see what they're throwing out. You got this, mistress. Halt! What? Who goes there? At this spidery little man walks up to you. <laughs> you completed the construction. A shorter, shorter robot scurries up to you. He's like, "Stop right there! You're in restricted territory. Wait, scanning. Never mind. You're good." <laughs> <laughs> what is your designation? Oh, I'm under designation under the Austrian Army of the South. <laughs> Is that a real thing? What do you mean it's a real thing? It's my real thing! Okay. <laughs> if it's real to you, it's real to me. Permission to kill. Uh, not great. You can try. <laughs> he just lasers you. Is that permission to kill? No. No. Okay. What uh, relation do you have to the, what is it, Grand the, Island Army? Yeah, the, 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 the Grand Island Battalion. Grand Island Battalion. The Grand Alley Battalion works on the surface. We work below the surface. We don't deal with those dicks, although we all share the same power source. So in theory, we're on the same side. Why don't you like them? 
Well, because they're dirty foreigners. Oh, you're just Whoa. racist then. Oh, gosh. What? You don't hate people that are different from you, fishy. <laughs> yeah, we definitely don't hate people <laughs> that are different guy. from us. Well, I'm not judging. Obviously, otherwise we would hate <laughs> sure. you because you're different from us. I'm just starting to hate you because of your general personality. <laughs> uh, I'm just... What are you guys doing down here? <laughs> I just tells them not to seize them. <laughs> I don't we are because of who you are. looking for some, some sources of malleable signal. Well, here in the Genasi Wing, we have a, a bit of disturbance in our foundation that's causing quite a tremor. But other than that, no. Okay. Can what, we what see is it you? that you are tossing off the edges here? Oh, uh, we're clearing up debris from when the power was shut off. A lot of the... Uh, Upkeep of this place was disabled, and due to tremors from the surface, we've uh, just been cleaning up. You see. Also, we dispose of the waste from the Genasis within the building here. We throw it off the edge, mostly just excrement. But yeah. Are th- are there still Genasi there? Oh yeah, there's uh, there's one surviving squadron. The rest of them are home to us. How might we access that building? I'd be able to bring you in. They're inside of the wall here. Uh, do you have any specific uh, appointments you need with the Genasi? We can always corral them up and send them off to their general or their uh, normal designation. Uh, I believe we may need to play that by ear after seeing how they are kept. That's perfectly fine. We're running out of uh, storage containers to uh, put the slaves in anyway, so this actually is better the, for us. The, um, mm, shall we go and <clears throat> check, take a look? Sure. By the way, what's your name? Oh. <laughs> uh, name's Rendo. Rendo. Yeah. Okay. I'm the overseer of the Austrian <laughs> League of the South. <laughs> Forget the middle part that I made up it's, off the top of my it's head. It's okay. You're very old. You've been down here no, for a the, long time. No, I said the the I I was the Austrian League of the of the South yeah. essentially. Austrian, yeah, Southern Army, Austrian Army of the Austrian South. Austrian Army of yeah. the South. Yes. It's okay that you forgot. You're very old and you've been down here for a long time. I'm a robot. I don't get old. I only get wise. Yeah. Move on, fleshy. I'll remember. Ew. I'll just. I'll just remember your name because I'll remember it has an R Wait. in it, and that stands for something else. Give me a hand. Why? No, he's just gonna. He's just gonna check your blood. Uh, I mean, give me a hand. What are you uh, trying to detect if I'm pure blooded so you can throw me in a camp? No. <laughs> he looks away. <laughs> So I, I, I give him I give so him the weird. prosthetic arm. Yeah, the prosthetic arm? Yeah. One of us, I see. Uh, <laughs> yep, no sign of intelligence life form anywhere. He pulls anywhere. you in like, it's like, you know, the Trump pull for the handshake. Pulls you in. <laughs> this guy's giving you trouble. <laughs> you let me know, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, no, no, seriously. We have to stick together. Yeah, good. glory to the robot empire. Whatever that means. <laughs> 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 so he lets go of you at that point, and he walks away. Like, There's a cat outside my window up there. Mel? See his tail. <laughs> Is that what Rindo said? There's a cat. Outside? There's a cat up there. Get him! <laughs> you see her gunfire. Is it? <laughs> anyway, um, they would lead you up to this large wall with all the lights coming out of it at this point, and you enter into this door that just essentially looks like it's just like an abandoned Outlast facility at this point. Ugh. Just, oh, wait. just it looks like it's just a destroyed office building, honestly. This whole place is built like a metallic, like call center. It, but during this age, you can tell it's been repurposed for storage, for both organic and inorganic, and inorganic things. But as of right now, you pass by and it's very, it's very near automata. You see a lot of the robots in here that are built differently. A lot of the robots as you pass through, and nobody here is affe- affected by the voice at this point, right? No, uh, no. Nobody here. Yeah. yeah. You see a lot of <coughs> robots that are 
in these different um, centers, these different office spaces, they're built differently. They're built to look like they're much more slender, much more humanoid. And if anybody here has any dealings with like more psi figures, they're almost built to look more like Genasi. Hmm. Like they're simulating okay. that. And they're Interesting. living their lives. You see a, a group in one corner, like in one of these houses through one of the windows, uh, essentially feeding a family of robots a pile of oil, essentially. You see in another one a, a, a group of these robots essentially having like a, a sparring match. Another one where a group of these robots are having a drink. Another large open field where these robots are holding <coughs> fishing poles sitting by a non-existent lake. Oh. Pantomiming <coughs> fishing. As okay. if in their brain that they see it. Huh. Where are those? All these different areas. And you're brought into a staircase where you go up floor after floor after floor after floor after floor after floor after floor. After floor. And you're brought to this door here that looks slightly more scummed over. And one of the robots opens up, it's like, this is the last Genasi ring. Have fun. This is also where we uh, detected the signal. So, uh, do what you got to do. And you walk back down the stairs. <coughs> is it bad that whatever we face in here, it's definitely not going to... I'm not going to hate it as much as I hate that guy. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Like like he seemed pretty cool! Glorious! Mm-mm. What? He was racist against us! Well, He was talking about slavery. He was racist oh. against a lot of things. Like, talking That's shit about Etheridge. I don't see race. Mm, glorious. That's pretty bad. Too, you shouldn't just say that. I'm joking. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> sure. This is a hot button issue. <laughs> you have any idea how tired I am? Let's go. Glorious all right. looks around and says, "You just all look human to me." I do. I mean, that's, I've that's, seen thousands that's... of different races. Anyway, you guys continue forward. I here. couldn't see you races. You can't see them. <laughs> Let's go forward. Can't <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's go into this ward. Yeah. Yeah, let's go into the ward. Uh, we do that. It's very unpleasant. We do that. <laughs> we do it. We don't intend to eat. Are you Irish? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what I am? <laughs> this is why I don't trust him. Hey there, folks, it's me. I mean, he's not the only one being a little sketchy. <laughs> Still less sketch than Hostel was. <laughs> Hostel literally never wanted to be with us. He only wanted to be on the roof. He wanted to be on the roof, like yeah. catching raindrops in his mouth. He was so <laughs> short, he wanted to find a few times where he could be tall. Like, <laughs> Just wanted to be on the tallest surface of the yeah. room. Did I never mention any time he saw a cat trick, he just climbed to the top of it and perched on it? <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> Kitty man? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I, I, every every time every time there was like you know when when like glass would like glint off the wall and make like a shiny, the hostel's like. Oh. I see something, <laughs> guys. I, need I don't to, trust it. I need to I need to explore this lead. There's a lead on the wall over here. A lead. lead, lead, lead. So in in we go. <laughs> you walk through and it's like like I said like a dilapidated office space where the walls are sort of this shitty uh, foam that they would use like for the bridges of the different walls. It's this, yeah. it's this cold aluminum steelish material. Cool. Just like a, like a chrome, like a SpongeBob chrome version of the future, but it's it's just like a like a general office building, or a call center. And you walk because through. of what he said, I'm gonna walk behind Ember and just keep an eye on her. Based off of what okay. said about the genocide. You walk behind the ember? Not like directly behind, but just <laughs> make sure that. On my neck. One thing you do sure notice as you walk through, there is a single robot patrolling the hallways here, and he's carrying just a basket just filled to the brim with just 
old food if you get on this, and he's walking in different buildings, leaving, and walking in other ones, leaving. Oh, that's weird. There's less and less food. Like. And this guy, this, yeah. he's more, he's more kind of like built like Spit was. He is more of just kind of like a, I am here to deliver and leave. <coughs> so, what do you mean old, like moldy? No, like, like not. It doesn't look as updated of a robot. Like, oh, modern. so the food yeah. isn't old. The food is old. Oh. It looks like not old, like great. moldy, or it's, like it looks like it like could. Like, how do we know that it's, it's old? It's not the right color. <laughs> oh. We're like, oh, that hamburger meat's cooked, and he's like, no, it's not. It's no. Most, no, not a lot of meat. <laughs> not a lot of meat. It's, it's mostly. <laughs> It's mostly like uh, <laughs> breads and stuff and vegetables and Wait, like green. soups, like little <laughs> mason jars filled with like this brown slop. Like, Ooh. Ooh. Essentially Ooh, like just like stacks of this stuff. Is sourdough? Ooh. <laughs> so the uh, robot here would be the kind that didn't need the uh, signal to operate. You don't necessarily know that. Uh, it does look newer than Spit. It just doesn't look like one that's designated for conversation, okay. like these but ones are. Like, would any would these robots have been active before we reactivated all the ground floor robots? Uh, just from looking at the general design, they do kind of look the similar make. Whereas one like Spit looks like a completely different thing. This guy relatively resembles them, so in theory. It wouldn't surprise you if he was also dead once the signal was off. Okay. No, not this guy specifically. Sorry, I'm correcting this just some thinking back here. This guy actually does look old enough that he might be kinetically generated. Okay. Just because you're looking at his feet and the way his his face is kind of built looks like it functions off of steady movement. So in theory, this guy looks like he might just be moving to survive as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just walk up to one of the doors that he just walk up. Make a perception check in there. As you can see, this this stain, this brown stained window, like the like the window to an asylum. As you walk in, it's a four. Four. You don't see much through the grime. You have to go in. Can I go to another door then? Yeah. If you go to like the one parallel of it, yeah, you'd be able to look as well. What'd you say? Investigation? Uh, yeah, perception. perception. Oh, that's not good either. Perception. That's also only a four. <laughs> You're really getting the uh, idea of how well kept this floor is. It's okay. just completely stained over with grime and mildew. Okay. Mistress will try to open the door that the robot came out of. You're able to open it up, no problem. Inside you see <coughs> nine organic people in here. Ooh. They're piled up in this it's kind of cubed off this section room. It's super small, but it's enough that the people are still functioning to some degree. And all the figures in here have helmets on, okay. which is good. They're translucent, but they still look relatively out of it. Yeah. You see, there are two figures that are older. The other seven are super small, like children. Oh. Uh, the two figures that are there seem to be patting at the walls as if they're like drawing something but nothing appears as they do it the children are staring at them in awe as this happens they sit around they're like kind of like clapping and emoting their hands and you hear is did anybody here speak uh, Polly yeah. uh, Western Polly mm. Mistress has Iochtan Malik they speak Eastern, 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 Eastern. Yeah, they, yeah, they're speaking, well, so then, in theory, you wouldn't understand them, okay. these ones, as the children are just kind of piping up in this, this <laughs> very guttural language. And the parents, are they, like, different enough that I can't understand any of it, or is it somewhat it's similar? Simple, it's like, somewhat, it's, it's essentially, like, word. transitioning from, <sighs> like, German to English. Uh, you, it's like, most English people kind of know, like, it's like a Spanish person trying to talk to an English person. They know like bits and pieces. You're like, okay. you can tell this is like they're trying to teach them. They're like pointing out stuff, and they're okay. the, pe- the kids are repeating what the the, the adults are saying okay. essentially as they point to the wall, which has nothing on it. 
is it playing around? You know, like, um, the Russian, the Russian card. And the kid's like, Adi, Adi! And they move along and do this well. And then you open the door. They all turn and look at you. Robot? Robots! Oh, food. Uh, no food. Good. No food. Good. We receive. Thank you. We are not robots. Thank you. Thank you. No robots. Um, As one of them looks over, the other one kind of looks over. It's like, who are you? This is kind of an old, an older adult comparatively to the two. We're from the surface. Friends. You're from the road? Higher. What do you mean higher? There is an entire world above the road. That it's the road is underground. Make a persuasion check. This is very much a uh, Plato esque conversation. Oh you're boy, this guy. <laughs> Staring at a shadow. <laughs> That's gonna be an eleven. <laughs> Maybe a twelve. Could be a twelve. I know. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I know. Persuasion, <laughs> right? What the hell are you talking about? Per- persuasion, right? Yes. Yeah. Twelve. It's much better than eleven. This figure squints at you. You can tell the, all the skin on the figures here. They're like this dark blue. Probably identify them as water genasi. Mm. They look around, they look back and forth. You hear this figure ramble something with the figure next to them. And look back over. What do you want with us? Are we in trouble? Are we on the next shipment? No. We. Can they, can they understand me? This guy seems to. This guy does. Um, I mean, what? doing here? Are you slaves? Are you... Well, we live here. This is what we do. We're teaching our children that this is what they do during the daytime. What, what are you, you doing do th- here? What do you do? What are you, what are you guys doing here? You haven't clarified. Are we, are we okay? You're okay. We yes. You know, we As are the children are kind separate. of, the one that isn't talking, kind of gathers the kids around him. We're looking for something. Uh, something that should be in this general area. Maybe not in this room, but here in this wing. And trying to find out more about your situation. When you said, when you asked if you would be on the next shipment, what did you mean by that? We are... The robots sometimes gather us up and send us off. I don't know where, but I... We don't really have the means to fight them. What do they have you do? Like, why are they shuttling you between locations? I... I I do not know. They do not respond to us when we ask. This is... This has only been a recent thing, though. The robots have always helped us. And now we are just simply being moved around. How recently? What? How recently? Within the last months or so. Although recently, only a couple robots show up. But now, now they are all back alive. I just want things to go back to normal. So no one should be taking you anytime soon. We kind of care of that. Okay. He turns over to the kids here and he whispers something and the kids kind of look relieved and so is the adult Mm. that's attending to them and they kind of relax. How did you come to speak common in addition to... Well, my, my father taught it to me. His father taught it to him. It is not a a required part of our curriculum, but I do enjoy uh, learning ways of 
freaking the old X and what not that they're found around here. Aside from the others here in this room, do you have interaction with any of the others here on this floor? Of course. We all know each other. We are all well, we are like a big family. Mm. Although, I did used to know the other floors. They don't visit anymore. Did you say these were humans? They're Genasi. They are Genasi? Yeah. Okay. I, I think, even though I'm kind of talking the whole time, I do want to keep an eye on Ember. Okay. Are you <laughs> able to... I want you to Sometimes for a moment, and please just humor me. Look around and describe what you see around you, just your surroundings. Of course. Uh, what does the world look like to you? Yes, of course. Uh, turns around and looks outside the window. There's the sun, uh, the trees, and the birds. And are you able to... Although I know that's not correct, right? I didn't used to see the sun and the birds. No. This is all very new in the past several months. All those things that you're seeing <coughs> do exist, but not here. I've heard rumors about them. I just thought that we'd finally earned it. We were finally allowed to see them. Would you like to see the real ones? What do you mean? Take them above ground. What you're seeing outside <laughs> is an illusion of the sun and an illusion of birds. Is Would you why, like to see the real... Is that why the robots gave us these masks? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. They told us if we take this off, we wouldn't be able to handle the, the light. We wouldn't be able to hear the voice. Um, that is just, why it, they protect you. Good. So don't take them off. I would never. Robots have only brought us good. But they've been keeping you locked up. They do not stay locked up. They, they are keeping us alive. That was a weird noise that came out of that cat. No, was... no it came out of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> they are, these robots have been helping us live. Do you not have the means to sustain your own lives? I mean, we sometimes go out and farm and attempt to explore, but there's nothing else out there. It's just emptiness. I mean, we got all the way down here. There's there's a way out, and if you and your people are interested, we can show you the way. But, I mean, I also understand that this is your whole life. It's not just easy to get up and change all that. But Forgive you... us. This does sound similar to how the robots take us away. They In promised this... us a larger life and I would like to come back here someday. In this instance you would be leaving of your own volition. We won't, we're not going to force you to go anywhere. We're simply giving you an offer if you and yours want to experience something new, we can go and we can show it to you. If you don't, then you can stay here. Is where else new safe from the flying knights? The flying knights? The flying knights. The creature. Mm. Um, the shadowy worms that scrawl the ceilings. We have to stay hidden when the lights go out. That's not something that people have to deal with on the surface. <laughs> Usually, like, on the full surface. I mean, away from here, we don't. Well, on are we going to leave them in Bride's Peak? I mean, no. no. Welcome to the surface. Enjoy the post-apocalypse. <laughs> the of the kids, which... They all look very, ta they're wearing these tattered burlap robes. It's, they all look, their skin is. That's horrible. Uh, 
uh, irritated, their hair is matted. They don't look like they're living a great life, but it does look like this is all they've known. And he looks back up, it's like, can I take them? Can I take my people? Yes. 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 You can promise that we do not leave one group at a time. We can all leave at once, then yes. I don't see why not. That would be up to you and your people. I will also, <coughs> and I'll say this more as an aside to Mistress. I don't know what the uh, the robots are going to think about us taking all of them. But it's around this time. I don't know if we should be promising that we should uh, we're gonna let four of them leave. Well, the way I see it, we can. We have to try. Yeah, I, I think we should definitely try, but I would just be, I get, we don't know what the robots are wanting, so it may be just more difficult than just saying, all right, go away. Well, know. mistress, you feel something touch your hand. One of the children have wandered up to you and grazes the back of it with their palm. You hear them look up and say, Talia, Talia, mm. as he looks at his hand, then the kids kind of like gasp, like, oh. Does your hand look bad? You do have skin. Yes. Aww. Yeah. You are real. Right? Is there... Uh, mistress is going to describe what, like, the that malleable signal is sort of like okay. in the physical world. Okay, so explain and see if there's anything in my mind. Yeah. I have not seen something like this, although I have heard the noise you described from just above us. Above? In the ceiling, it's like the screeching of the machinery coming to life, like the robots are screaming for help. Robots don't notice it. It started not too long ago. Is that what you mean? Only a few hours ago. Uh, that sounds like maybe. May I, may we show you? Sure. It's at this point the. Figure moves out of the uh, the room and walks towards one of the doors, very uh, gleefully. And as you guys follow up along, as it gets close to the door, once you guys enter, it stops in its place, as though it like it was paused. And then it flinches. You see its hands shake, and it turns and just like oh. back towards the door, opens it up. I did not normally get this far. <clears throat> it is. He opens the door, he opens it very cautiously, his arm kind of trembling as the door opens, as if he's expecting something to happen at any moment as he's opening the door. I believe it is up here. Uh, can someone go in front of me? Yeah. Uh, I've never... I've been outside here before, but I know where the robots go. Lead the way. Okay, I'll go. She walks right. The figure points towards the stairs. And you guys travel upwards on the floor. And sure enough, once you get to the next floor, you start to be able to hear it. Just this. The static. You enter in, and there. Check out this one here. This is. Like a, like a, a difference between a ghost of Christmas present to future esque. This room here is completely ransacked. This floor. Mm. No genasi about, but you do see every once in a while some of these cubicles are filled with these specifically built robots to resemble them. That are just kind of iterating normal life. But there are very few in here, and this place is just destroyed. Mm -hmm. And 
eventually you guys pass a corridor and round off to your right and you see just a white wall that's cutting through the cubicles of this same material that you have been using this whole time. Mistress will uh, use the static grabber to yoink it. You absorb it. Would you like to know the statistics of this? Sure. Yes. What's it say? O R T. O R T forty three. And what did the one by four one say? Okay, do you had four for that one as well? Um, I can I can list. You want me to read those off to you first? Yeah. Okay. The I have these written in front of me. The top uh, the top uh, layer for that is listed E P A ninety one. The left side. Listed TTI 99. The bottom is listed YUH 54. Yeah. Sorry, hold, hold on a moment. You're fine. Yeah. Okay, so top EPA 91, left was TTI 99. Okay. Bottom. bottom is YUH54. Like, what is there over here? What? YUH54. And the right side is AGU91. He's like falling off my list. <laughs> I remember when Creature used to be that tiny. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about him. He's a big fat cat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and where does the 2x2 two two say the orc 43? That is its left side. Okay, and it doesn't say that any. It doesn't say anything else. On it does. It has oh. one for others. All okay. three of those sides. Yeah. The top side is H J K sixty five. Okay. The right side is N D D thirty one. The bottom side is. G R E ninety one. Okay. And then you Okay. And you have two of these now, so <coughs> the area is devoid. It looks like all the area around it was just kind of like cut off, like it was sliced through. You see these burn marks in the area that the signal appeared. But you've collected another one. The figure standing around you here stares at you and all. It's like, who are you people? Are you gods? Are you who the voice says you are? Who does the voice say we are? The voice calls for higher power. I know not else what that means. Mm -hmm. But you will save us, won't you? Yes. Would you like this? You may worship me if you must. No, don't <laughs> worship her. Don't worship her. Us. May we assist you with else things. We have materials, we have food, we have, Act- we have uh, beds you can sleep well, in. What kind of materials were actually... Do you have incense? <laughs> you have incense, you have coal, herb. and herb. <laughs> Do you have Sweet some material to keep us warm if you are looking for Some charcoal? Uh, Perhaps. Yeah, can we just look through your stuff? <laughs> Take anything you have. Well, we need a little bit of charcoal. Take anything. Here, while you look for that, I want to play a song for the kids. 
Okay, you water back down Invite all the to kids. that main room. <coughs> the kids gather around you. Did and you I'm actually just, have a song you play for them? Or? Yeah, I'll just play a okay. song. Okay, and they just listen wonderful. you play yeah, music. And they look, they look like they've never heard music before. Oh, do they They're like shocked. it? shocked. You don't know, they just look surprised. Like, is why is this woman changing her voice up and down? It's, oh, it's I'm like, just not witchcraft. anything they've ever had the way. experienced. <laughs> and they attack you. at this time, these two Janasi wander around. They gather things from the different cubicle areas. They bring forth, like, markers. They bring forth, like, oh. pieces of, like, uh, broken up material from the robots. Little pieces <laughs> of scrap. They bring up um, oh, old... Uh, old empty jars. They bring up some jars that are filled with food. They bring you many of their rations. Mm. Um, and sure enough, they bring you some of the material that's been used to kind of keep the floors. There's multiple uh, uh, charcoal briquettes that you could have nice. if you wish. Charcoal! It's going to take, take two. Okay. Right, take two charcoals. Sweet. Two charcoals. And you have those things. Respect the robots. Tell me, I do need to know when was the last time any of you were shipped off? The figure looks up, looks back down. We were shipped off. We had the group shipped off. Mistress is going to try to gather the group together somewhere, like on a somewhere out of your shot of the Janasi. Mm-hmm. And you can probably move down to a different floor if you want, because you don't seem to protect any of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and is gonna try to say to the group, "I'd like to try to speak with the robots about taking them with us. I want to." see what we can do to make sure that there is minimal resistance. Yeah. I think that would be good. At least knowing where they stand on it would be <coughs> to us. So I feel like getting them out of here is not going to be super easy. <coughs> yeah. But <coughs> there is another option. What's that? Uh, I think I know what you're going to say. They can fight for themselves if we go into the Silhouette City and kill all their avatars. Well, if we can find them, we can also take them up. Yeah. Etheridge Syracuse has been much more amenable to Not being a massive dick. Uh, true, <laughs> in comparison to this new robot. But who knows yes, how he feels about Janasi? He hasn't mentioned anything, has he? Well, I know he didn't like non or he didn't like organics that aren't that he doesn't know because I was beaten up pretty bad. Organics. The uh, simple fact of the matter is, it seems like he could be convinced to let us simply. Right. That even if we can't convince the uh, Austrian painter down there, uh, perhaps. Jesus Christ. Perhaps we could just teleport the Genasi out and deal with Etheridge instead. Or we could convince uh, the general that uh, we're taking over as their masters and leading them to a new location. 
we, so we have options. Well, yeah. yes, I, th that would be my intent. Like, uh, the robots seem to think that these people are property, so we should try to claim them as ours. Yes. Also, if most of these robots are controlled by the voice when we shut down the voice, we might not have an issue with the robots anymore. That's mm -hmm. true. There may be far fewer robots. Yep. That makes sense. This is all very sickening to me. That yeah, this has I, just kind of been going on. It's yeah. definitely not okay that they just so casually refer to them as their slaves. It seems like this has been a long, ongoing process. Yeah. Have you encountered any slaves amongst the Grey Coats? Any slave labor or, it, like, with the Grey Coats or in Malik? I mean, the Malik army, they. It's not necessarily slaves, it's more like involuntary service. Like, it's not necessarily that they own you, it's just provide use to them, then you're now in the, arm, in the military whether you want to be or not. But outside of the military, was there any slave labor being used was in the society? Of outside of the what? Outside, outside of, like of the, the military. military. Um, when, as far as you've been involved in the Great Coats, you know that they do deal with trafficking of monsters with, with the... Uh, with the uh, gauntlet, right? You know that's the thing, and you don't necessarily know if that applied to people too. Right. But I mean, you if know, they definitely traffic things. Yeah. You guys this know this place directly connects to there. You guys know just as well as I do that they were totally fighting <coughs> trafficking and abusing and all that stuff. The creatures that were in the gauntlet. So I don't see why for them it wouldn't translate into humans as well. Yeah. Or not just humans, but anything. But as far as Malik is concerned, there wasn't really much there wasn't really any slavery. Just involuntary military service is what they called it. Yeah. Description? <sighs> well I think we got what we wanted from here, unless you guys have any other plans you want to do. Shall we move down? Yeah, let's, I mean, let's move on. Okay. Oh. What is it, mistress? About the list of names. Should we see if they recognize any of them? Yeah, we can. So, yeah. Do you mean the robots or the people? The people. The one thing you say all night. Uh, I like that that was what you wanted to say. That's funny. Are they really people? Okay, so you... Did you go and ask them? Yeah, so Mistress will, like, with the list of names, go and ask uh, the Genasi guy if he recognized any of them. As you show them up here, it's like, you see his face light up. You know where Derek and your car? I don't think that we know where they are. Where did you hear those names? They were shipped off so long ago. It seems that they were up on the road, uh, being used for some experiments. friend and Moira was his wife I do recognize Derek as well was from a different floor but he was just a tribe leader I never talked to him he was just a fire genasi that carried weight to different floors of this place I didn't know that he even left this Moira, is Moira on the list? Yes, Moira Lawton is one of the names. So Moira Lawton, 
So three of these names are Genasi, then? Yes. Uh, at least this guy recognizes them. Okay. Which, at least three are Genasi. Because he recognizes them all as Genasi, right? Yeah. Uh, we haven't come into contact with these three yet, but we're trying to figure out where they came from and who they might have been. Let us, please let me know if you find your archive. I haven't slept well since I took them away. We'll look for them. And I think while that conversation is happening, I want to like see if I can grab Ember out in the hallway. You bring Ember out. Yeah. Hey, uh, is this thermos thing? Is that something that needs to be done as soon as possible? Because if we move on, we may not be we may not get back here for a bit. Uh, sooner rather than later. I don't know what. If we get a whole bunch of genasis, none of them have to give much blood to fill up a thermos. <laughs> no, I was thinking like they just like prick their finger or something, and then we like kill them. Um, yeah, sooner rather than later, most likely. Because I don't know what he'll do if I don't do it. I don't if like we could find, like, a single adult genasi, we may be able to either convince them that we need to do this, I may be able to sneak up on them and just take a little bit of blood. I was thinking I mean, we could, like, tell them, like, oh, we have to do some testing or something. Yeah. You shouldn't lie to them. Though. Whatever so you want. You're not do. there. But <laughs> Andrew is. But like, if, I mean, I'm pretty sneaky. I'm not sure if it's you that has to do it, but I could potentially sneak into one of these rooms and take care of it for you. It just needs to be filled. It just needs to be filled. Just a single shot. Sex, sex, whatever. Will you kill them? I'm, I'm not gonna kill anyone. Okay. No. Uh, I, that's one thing I don't. No, want I don't. Do. I'm not gonna kill anyone. I just. Mm. I figure I can at least cut one of them. Mm-hmm. Either I mean, with their permission or without yeah, them I knowing th- who it is. I think you should. Now, our friend here uh, is in debt to a guy called the Celestian, and he needs some red liquid for use with his grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> and he says that he prefers that to come out of Genasi. That's so horrible. Okay, so you guys have this conversation. You guys head back to the group at that point? It's very loud for a first conversation. Yes. Okay, so back back to the group. You talk to any of them about this? Or you talk to the person you've been talking to? I'm just going to leave it up to Amber. Okay. Just figure I, w- I would offer. And if she wanted to hand, give me the thermos, I could run take care of it real fast. If we want to figure it out later, we can figure it out later. I'd probably hand it to you. Um, okay, you hand it, and then your vision goes dark. Okay. As you hear this voice deep in your head. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy to be in debt to. You work sooner rather than later. <laughs> I was wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, so he's gonna walk in the opposite direction. And like look in the windows and see if you can find like a single like adult genasi. Oh, like yeah. Investigation check before you leave. Um, I will hand begrudgingly. I will give you the fanny pack. So the if something done. happens, you could stow the uh, okay. thing in it. Okay. You said perception. <laughs> I right, say investigation. Investigation. They're both plus one. Uh, 13? 13. Okay, it takes a little bit of time. You do find one room, though, that just has a single person. It's one of the last rooms you find, too. This older-looking fellow here that's sleeping in a room. Okay, I'll quietly open the door. Okay, make a stealth check. <laughs> uh, 21. Yeah, you, uh... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, you open the door, and it doesn't seem to stir the figure as you open it up. You're okay. able to make your way in there stealthily. Okay. Um. Hmm. Sweet. And lick. <laughs> I was kind 
Dragon Ball scrap and lick. If he's not awake, just it like suck. It's just like right lick. on the cap, just like slide my rapier across it, hold it underneath it, and close it up and walk out. How much do you know about their anatomy? That could be like their carotid. Yeah, femoral, femoral yeah. artery. <laughs> yeah, in their cap. Exsanguinated them. Are they, are they <laughs> Can I do some sort of like check to see where the most blood Medicine check. is, but not lethal? Do, do a medicine check, okay. sure. Uh, 16. The head bleeds a lot. <laughs> 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 Oh, um, you know, like, especially in this, and you could probably, like, there's probably some meteor parts on the body that would bleed, but it would probably wake him up. Right. It would have to be a slower process, or you could always wake him up and tell him. Hey, gang, I'm taking your blood. It's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll go ahead and close go the, the door. door. You close the door, okay. <clears throat> and walk over to him and kind of, like, nudge him. Oh, oh, Starosh. Hey, uh, oh, no. Common? That's all I say to him. Help. No, no help. No. Uh, we're <laughs> this here, is going we're, great. We're here to help. <laughs> wow, my accent just went out the window. Right there. We're here to help. Alright. Um, we've talked with some other Genasi, and we're gonna. Okay, did we forget his name? We're gonna get you out of here. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna get you guys out of here safely. This is gonna be a really weird request. And I understand if you're gonna say no. Um, to help us get you out of here easier, I'm gonna need a little bit of your blood. Blood? Yeah. A doula. 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 Yeah. Aww. Blood. Roll, if you give me some, so I'll get you. We'll, we'll be able to get you out of here a little easier. You see, kind of like a, a tr oh, make a persuasion check, just okay. just for funsies here. For funsies. <laughs> no. What's in that one? But no. that makes it an eleven. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Still pretty good for yeah. that one. Holding that pyramid. This guy probably thinks you're a big jerk. <laughs> oh. But also rolled a net one. So. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the figure looks back and forth. Looks up at you. If you want and you can to see, like, his eyes flinch. He makes a gulp. And he holds his wrists out. Oh my god. I don't want to do your wrists, because that can get really dicey. Do that. Can I do your calf? And I like point down here. Oh, oh. it's gonna be safer that way. Sota, sota. Do it between the toes. Sota. You're an and he holds his point. entire leg out. <laughs> I'll take the rapier and the thermos and just like right along the meat of the calf. Just make a medicine check here. Oh my god. I feel like cut his freaking femoral. <laughs> just right, right about the ear. Right the ear. On the back side of the like knee. Just right the tendon. Yeah, yeah just the so, just do the oh, okay. Achilles tendon. You you. Cut underneath this spot in the calf here, and sure enough, you just hear this. But it starts to just exsanguinate here. Right. And you hear the figure, and you see his eyes close as this happens. Okay. He almost um, expects you to keep going. Like he, expect, he thinks you're taking his foot. Oh. <laughs> once, I, once I get it filled up, I'll close it. Nah, and I actually like thinks that's horrible. Rip part it of looks my like off around the time where it's almost full, it's slowing now. Like you didn't okay. hit anything. Okay, sure. But he's starting to like look a little. I could heal him if you guys like, want. His eye, he's not on flinching, he's just kind of laying down. there tiredly. Okay. Oh, I think once I get enough, I'll close it. And then I'll like help you. rip off part of my sleeve and like okay. wrap it around. With your medicine check, you could at least don't trust. make sure that everything's quiet. Okay. He's just, <sighs> he goes to bed very quickly afterwards. Mm -hmm. Alright. You hold the jar. Completely drains. Here in your head. Thank you for shopping, Legion Wear. Fucking <laughs> The jar you. shatters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the session there. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I broke your jar. <laughs> <laughs> 
which is like an existential crisis. Like Unless anyone else has something they wanted to say before that. No. <laughs> Mr. Zeras, the Janasi guy, his name. <laughs> oh, uh, he not, not the not the one that yeah yeah <laughs> not, that uh, not, uh, that not that guy. Not that guy. Blue man. Uh, Serosh. S e r o s h. Serosh. Hi, Sue. <laughs> Did I mess it up? Is it you to join me? No, I, I just that sounds familiar. Yeah, you just talked to him. Well, <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do I know you? We just talked. Oh, okay. Yeah, like it sounds like a name that might have come up earlier in the campaign. But let me know. Because <laughs> I didn't. If, I didn't it's not, if it's not intentional, then. Yeah, I didn't. Like, I don't think I planned it. You might let me know, though, because I do like Easter eggs if I fucked up. <laughs> if I fucked up, I did it on purpose. Hey, um, look at that. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean. Maybe I'm just wrong. That was subconscious. Damn it. Andrew's gonna go back and listen to every single session we did. 